let's do the thing. We more than likely won't be here for long. It's a, I do not want to go too far into the next chapter because, um, well, you know, whenever you start a new chapter, if people aren't there, they're the ones that go, so what are we doing now for the entirety of that chapter? Yeah. So, <clears throat> uh, let's run it off. Whereas last time, what happened last time? That was 27 days ago. Yeah. So, uh. you just left Baldur's Gate. That was, that was the big one. You left Baldur's Gate. Um, the, the commander, was it? Commander Lyra Port. Was it Zod? Zod? Nah, he was he was below her. You met. Yeah, let's see. Okay, come on, deport her. And I've got Tarsal really liked her in capital letters next to it. I specifically remember that like Grifton got his little moment there. <laughs> Someone's <laughs> talking to him. Yeah, she could talk Dorish. That was it. Validation. Um, uh, gave. Krieg over to Zodge and thought it can be on. Um, yeah, we were going to Candlekeep to meet a Silvera Savekus. You are Silvira. We're, we're doing really good here. I'll be honest, guys. We're doing we're doing great. <clears throat> no, please. The woman on. that looks like scarily close to Farcival's mom. Silvira Savakas. There we go. Silvira. Um, 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 um. We need to have a red book to get into Candlekeep. Yeah. Uh, then there was a Cambion fight. There was uh, a curse on Grifton. Um, see right now, that curse was meant for UQ. Um, just putting it out there. <laughs> But it was it was a cool moment, and I'd never get to do it again. So, you know, yep, you, you you dodged a bullet. Yeah, literally. Someone else <coughs> walked around and found out for you. And the worst Where's part, the link? Uh, it should be in the general. I'm pretty sure I pop it in the general under pens. Oh, is it, is it pinned or? Is it... Yeah, <clears throat> always pinned. Don't worry. But yeah, that's. That's really about it. Use uh, all, all y'all took a long rest here at this nice little camp scene that I said 27 days ago I will need to remake and make look better. Yeah. I did not. <laughs> <laughs> I was preoccupied <laughs> watching Reacher <laughs> and movie. Uh, if you ever want something done, just harass me to do it. I'll do it out of spite. Mm. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> During your long rest, your good friend, your beautiful, beautiful companion, the good friend, Rhea, tells a story over by the fireside. The tale of the Hell Raiders, which I'm not 100% sure if I've told you, so I'm just going to retell you again. Because. <laughs> you just sit there in the open wood. Little camp set up, a nice warm fire. Belly's full, doing your own thing. You're all within a earshot. <clears throat> it was... Over a century past that the great trouble began. Fiends roamed the lands to the north and west of Helterel. Fields were despoiled, livestock slaughtered, homes raised, and people dragged off to terrible, unknowing fates. Terror ripped all of our hearts. The city's cavalry were across the land, striking down fiends where they could find them and suffering fearful losses. It was never enough. 
For every fiend destroyed, it seemed two more appeared elsewhere. <coughs> the ruler of Elturel, the High Rider, asked his people to pay, pray to the gods for aid. To everyone's astonishment, a mighty angel entered the city the next day. Her name was Zariel, which means Champion of Night. The prayers of Elturel had been heard, and help had come. <clears throat> Zariel located the gate through which the fiends were entering the natural world, and on the fields of the dead, west of the city, she declared that she would lead the cavalry to Avernus, destroying the infernal host that was amassing there, striking a great blow against the forces of darkness. Jesus. <clears throat> the High Rider sent out Riders of Elturel, now numbering in the thousands with Zariel at the head, riding a golden mastodon. With a great cry, Zariel and her army charged the gates. Legions of Avernus trembled and buckled, but they did not crumble. Zariel was defeated and the remnants of her army returned to Elturel. Overcome with grief and at the loss of the glorious general, but confident that the Lords of the Nine Hells would think twice about threatening Elturel again. <clears throat> there were celebrations to honour the knights who henceforth be known as Hell Riders from that day forth. That's the story of the Hell Riders, as foretold to us, down and down and down. <clears throat> Look shred. I will take my leave for now. Enjoy the rest of your eve. I will see you bright and early. She starts to make her way to a smallish tent. Is there anything anyone else wishes to be doing right now? Or shall the sun come up to the skies once more? I'm just like the three most antisocial people on a party, and we're <laughs> just gonna see if they can hold a conversation. Uh, Jack and Jack and turns to Tarsaval and prays to say hello. Jack and just looks uh. and <laughs> yeah, chaos. That's what I thought was gonna happen. All right. <laughs> You yeah. you missed the um, session where we questioned, you, didn't you? Yeah, I think so. For you then, I think um, Orby would, at the time in, when it's night time and people are sleeping, to just sort of try and pull you aside. And he will be to you quietly. So, notice that. Not talking. This is it's an unknown thing to me. My people, he also been cursed to be unable to speak. But I was lucky. Raven Queen. Oh, her. Tommy, was found me. You seem to be kind of cutting her out a little bit. I don't know if it's maybe your microphone's not attenuating fully. Sorry. That's right. <clears throat> um, 
her followers he's speaking too softly as well her followers only and it was under their guidance that I and to speak I say this because you have met a follower that I similar to one that I met at night in the inn maybe she is testing you your voice maybe you could try tuning with her asking if you want something Wait. Could you repeat that last two, like two, like one sentence? <laughs> uh, maybe he is testing you, Raven Queen. As it was her follower who visited you the night in the inn. Maybe she is testing you. You can find your voice. Yeah, I can just give the thumbs up. You could commune to her or the being that you saw. Mm -hmm. And okay. find out. I want you to do something. Okay, okay, I got it. Little shrugs. So it's, it's, still night, it's still night time, sorry? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Alright, okay. Sorry, are you done? Are you still going? <laughs> So I'll say, uh, he, he just finished off, if you like, I could try and make you this. And he holds up, um, basically, it's like a little talisman, which is um, some twine and some feathers formed into sort of like a raven with its wings yeah. outspread. Um, I was going to ask if I could pray or something and try to communicate with... Oh. Yeah. If you show interest, I'll give you my t totem card. If you want that one, it's not fancy um, though. Jack and the can like, holds out his hand as if, as if he wants to like, receive it. So I'll, I'll hand that over. It's, it's nothing. Get fancy. this man a pen and paper. I'm sick of his <laughs> ass. <laughs> <clears throat> it's... Copy hands you a little totem. What does a little totem look like? I don't think I've. I don't think it's so, something uh, described it... to me. No, what it is, it's a case of some twine and some leather wrapped up and with bits of his um, clippings of his wing, his feathers, make a sort of, much like a raven, it's armed with its um, uh, wings outstretched and it's in a circular wooden sort of loop. So do you know what the dream, dream catchers? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a bit like that, but there's like a, a, a raven totem in the middle of that, and it's not massive, it's quite small. Um, yeah, oh. that's sort of what it is. And it, 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 Corby's impression of the, his version of the Raven Queen holy symbol be, which is a raven in front of a moon. I'd have known we were doing that, I'd have come prepared. <clears throat> Does he hand you this little dream catcher like totem? <clears throat> Pardon me. You take this. It's just well crafted for what it is. Do you pray now or do you take some time to yourself later on? Yeah, so I'd like to pray it when it before when everyone goes to sleep. I'll stay up a little bit. And... Yeah, a few words <laughs> in my head. I don't know if anyone else has done it beforehand. Then. Um, uh, I don't think so. No. Then, as most everyone is settled in. You hear the zzz, beep, 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 of opal and the thing out to solar charge. I don't know how War Forest work, I'll be honest. You hear the snows of others and sadly smell another. You take the <coughs> little totem and you 
Close your eyes. What do you... What do you say? How doth one pray? How does one pray? What does one say when one prays? Um... I forgot her. Dear... Bird... God... <laughs> Please come today. Please. Now they're gonna take his pack away. <laughs> Dear bird god, he's got a one random Aracocra god, like, oh, yes! <laughs> <laughs> Just that one Twitch streamer as he gets his first sub. <laughs> Let's go! It's even better because he's not his mum. <laughs> he accidentally changed his patrons. <laughs> oh, sometimes, oh. sometimes small. Sorry. No, it's alright, man. Dear Raven Queen, um, I call to you. Um, please bless me with your company. Oh, that's a big ask. The Raven Queen herself. <laughs> well, it's the night quietens. The smell could be a lot better, but you know, forest fruits and all that jazz. You hear the voice in your head. Yes. What? seems to be the issue. My voice? What will it take to get my voice back? Why do you feel we have taken your voice? the test <clears throat> to use our power you must be able to speak your inability to speak does not demonstrate use of the power we gain no benefit from seeing you use the power if we take away your ability to use the power but how am I supposed to benefit you if I can't use the power either? Look inward. Think about yourself. Everything you've done. This is of your own doing. And not ours. We have no reason to curse you. You have done this of your own volition. You were cursed it wasn't you. when we met you. Can you undo the curse? Give me a constitution saving throw. <clears throat> Let's be clear, this is going to be one you want to fail. ELDR, um. get a therapist. <laughs> Do you feel a slight pain come over that sort of pulsing headache? This is beyond our power. Maybe you should seek out a cleric. You are, after all, going to a rather powerful place. Someone there may be able to assist you, but I 
have no power. You okay. are more tuned to your body than I was expecting. Um, and one last question. Yes. Regarding my regarding my oath or my pledge to you. What is what is um how would you describe someone being innocent? Was that was that the was that the oath I can't harm the innocent? I too must read the contract, give me a moment. Remember ladies and gentlemen, I wrote this. <laughs> Check you are conquest tenants of conquest. Let me just check. I don't know why Jacken's dialogue is so funny to me. Like it's just like he's just I love him, <laughs> and I just stop like in, like getting the urge to interrupt it to say something stupid because it's just like I don't know. He's silly. I like him. <laughs> he is whimsy. <laughs> This perpetual detect thoughts that you have going is crazy. <laughs> <clears throat> innocent is innocent. For one so who... filled with a holy conquest, you should be able to ascertain the difference between Innocence and wickedness. That is all. <clears throat> As you feel your mind seem to just go empty, that almost glassiness over your eyes for a moment is you've almost disassociated from everyone else here at for you. <sighs> Take a little moment and we'll see you there. Go to sleep. You do the the good old sleepy bye byes. Yes. All week, the next day, so happy. It's been a while since I've had to do the music, guys. Give me a second here. We'll use this one. I like this one. It's. Melancholy as fuck. <laughs> Just make your way down through the sword coast. You better not just decide what I thought you said. <laughs> A few days travel. I am not going to do anything for this because there's not enough people to run some decent combat encounters and, you know, Thumbs up. That being said, mm -hmm. on about your fourth day of travel, you watch as a man and a woman start walking up the road towards you. First, there's little dots almost in the distance before coming closer, coming closer. And as they do, they become very close to yourself. As you do, the man puts his hand out towards you. But the pardon me. I was wondering if you would like to uh, partake in a game with myself and my friend here. Uh, adventurers such as yourself, I understand that he's maybe a little busy, but I promise we'll make it worth your while. I swear, I swear, there will be no harmed animals or people in the making of this fun. He's gonna look at us. <clears throat> the woman at the back looks comically dressed. Both of these people standing out like sore thumbs, dressed to the nine in all manner of clashing, vibrant colours. Kind of leans out. Yeah, and the best part is you. Benefit. 
What do you say? We don't mind walking backwards with you, so we prefer to walk and talk. Uh, Percival sort of just like looks back at the group and like side eyes the people from the side and then looks back at them and goes, Benefit how? Oh, we've got all manner of fun cacophonies. So I take it you're first. It's just surprisingly vague and interesting, so I... I guess so. The two immediately turn heel. The man puts his arm around you. So... You're walking through the hills of Neverwinter. When all of a sudden you see a large pack of gnolls ripping and tearing a man away. What do you do, Traveller? Well, intently in your eyes. Well, how alive is the man? He doesn't look very alive now, but they seem to have left some of his belongings there. In the middle of this field, but there's gnolls everywhere. But that's a a big juicy looking bag filled with all manner of things filled to the brim I guess I would probably just leave it there I don't think it's worth that if he's dead then there's nothing there then I guess it wouldn't matter to me oh. well then you continue to walk through the woods you come across a small camp, fire burning, tents ripped apart, there's still meat on the fire, but there's nobody around, or rather quiet given the circumstances you saw previously. Well, is there uh, any sign of danger at all? I guess? It doesn't look like there's any danger anywhere. In fact, maybe you're the danger here. I can assure you I am not. Um, I'd probably just uh, leave. Like I said, I don't care. It's a man. He just looks at you. Where's your sense of adventure, adventurer? Where's your sense of courage and danger? Oh! I'm a scholar, not really a pack riding adventurer. I write books for a living. Uh, oh. Not my thing. <sighs> well. I'll give you a little something anyway for your troubles. He's gonna lean into this bag that he has. He rather small bag, but as far as bags go, I mean, he, he shouldn't be shoulder deep in this bag. He's gonna pulls out a clear, shimmering liquid. Suppose this will do for one such as yourself. Uh. Thank you. So you immediately kind of peels off and round to yourself, Corby. You, you look like you have fun. Do you want to have some fun with me? Depends. He leans in. You're awake. In a tower. Chained to the wall. On the other side, you see your friend is gonna peels off and points towards the woman. She looks at you, puts her hands up. Adventurer, help me! What do you do? Am I locked up? You are, yes. How am I locked up? 
chains and shackles on the wall. But your feet are free Fine. around the debris. Well, I have my clothes on. What type of sadist would strip a man and hold him hostage? Are you fully clothed, of course? In that case, I would use my feet to pick the locks with my clock. You skillfully lean back and unlock your chains before you look round in this tall castle. Out the window, you see the storm clouds and lightning. Your friend still stands there, chained to the wall. Help me! Please, help me! What do you do? Are there, are there any other exits other than the window? There is a hatch on the floor. It does not seem to be locked. I would over and listen the hatch see if I hear anyone approaching please dive your ear on the hatch and you listen but all quiet on the southern front and I would try and free my friend you run over and free your friend Breaking them from their bondage. Roll a perception check. Perception. I think I've just asked one of our most perceptive characters to roll a perception check, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> no, I ain't even gonna roll against that. You feel something slip into your pocket. As you do, he kind of pulls you closer. You look out the window and you hear it. And you look, and there is a rainbow of a dragon that flies across the window. Odd. It has all the dragons together. It looks like it may be Tiamat herself. Adventurer, what will we do? Do I know who Tiamat was? Dad. Uh, Let's see, yeah. Kind of a big figure, yeah. Hide, avoid, as much as we can. If it came to it, you'd have to <clears throat> offer her praise and hope that she shows mercy. That's where they are, hiding under the crisps, Matthew, you fat bastard. Does looking at you. I'll ask another perception check. Yep. It's really brief as the moment you kind of feel your cloak almost move. You get extremely light before it's back once more. The colour seems to have changed just a little. He does. He kind of pulls you down a little. You watch as the head comes in through the window. As it does, you hear the voice. Bring her to me. She is to be mine. What do you do, adventurer? I would look to my friend. Ask them if they would want to go. Anywhere but here. Anywhere but with her. We must escape. I would try and lead her away. Safety. Down through the tower. <laughs> Places where a dragon wouldn't fit. You run. You sprint, you hide, you manage to find your way out of the castle into the countryside, miles away. Oh, you saved me, adventurer, thank you. As he 
looks at you and places a hand on your shoulder. You've earned it. You've earned it all. She kind of immediately peels away and puts a hand around your neck, Jack. And so what's your um, story? I, would you? Yeah. Have my cloak back, please. Oh, I don't think you'll want this so much now. You've got that no. one. Was that Tom? <laughs> Corby just goes, why, why not? Would I not want the cloak that was given to me? Don't have the laptop, so you're going to be a little second there. Uh, cool. You're going to look, you know, touch your cloak, you watch that the slightest touch causes it to just <laughs> and start f essentially just flapping wildly in what is essentially the lightest of touch. Dramatic flair, travellers. Dramatic flair. He looks at you and gives you a coy smile. I look at him and see. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. Corby just gives him a long, hard stare. Do you not like the cloak I've given you? I can give you this one back, but you're more than welcome to keep the one that I've given you. Hello. You just bring this sentimental. Oh, you're just bringing this dumb dog into me. Okay. Okay. The dogs assumed their position, Laura. It's game over for you. Okay, bye. Sorry, Meg, I don't have any bread to give you. D don't lock her in here! She's got a low IQ and she'll start crying that she can't open the door. Apologies. There's no image on D&D Beyond for this. But yeah, as he hands you back your old cloak. Uh, I say some things have sentimental value, if nothing else. Besides, gifts sometimes come with obligation. The only obligation here, travellers, is that you've been playing my game. See, once more holds an arm around yourself, Jack, and... What's your story, big man? Um, I'm gonna pull out one of my. Do I still have my, like, uh, quill and paper? Yeah. I'm gonna pull it out and just write on it that I can't speak. Oh. Due to a curse. The strong silent type that's cursed. Oh. He rubs his hands together. You've been riding on horseback for what seems like an eternity. You do. Your horse gives out a large whinny before collapsing to the ground. You fall off the horse and roll down a large steep hill off in the distance. You see a small plume of smoke. To the other side, you see a rushing river with its banks about to break. What do you do? Um, heal my horse. Your horse is dead, traveller. I head towards the smoke. I'm running the assumption that the whole time you're just writing this down, by the way, just for the brevity. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> do you run towards the smoke? Roll me a perception check, sir. Yeah, perception. Would you believe me if I said we both got 11? 
<laughs> but makes it beats, don't you? Feel this quick rummage in your bag before you're once more pulled down once more as you enter into the house. You see a woman trapped under a large beam. You hear the woman he's been with once more. Help me, please. I've been here for days. I'm stuck. To the side, you see a large chest of gold. Um, what do I do? What do you do? Um... I'd help, I'd help the woman. So you lift the barge off the, barge off the woman, she holds your hand. I have nothing to give you by this ring from my father. And she kind of places it on your finger. Go or stay. That is not to me now. The door to our house mysteriously opens once more. You run further and further till you end up in the kingdom. An audience with the king. <laughs> really, Tom? Really? She's not here, old cock. So Tom has to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Is you have enough? Audience with the king, and she looks at you. You have done a great deed for this kingdom, but tell me, you may have only one boon. I give to you a plot of land to yourself, or a place by my side. What? Say you, adventurer. I would take a place by your side. Give him another perception check, will you, mate? Yes. Dog, you're gonna need to not want to not feel this coming. I'm just saying that right now. If you feel something else, gonna be. Slotted into your pocket for immediately you are swung round and walking backwards with the man. You spend your time with the king. You spend your life there. And as you do, as you watch as the other woman walks up. You get married. You have kids. You watch as her hand kind of seems to glow as she smacks you across the face. And you die a happy man. You watch as both of them start walking backwards, off, up towards Baldur's Gate once more. Ta ta for now. We may see you again, adventurous. As they walk on out. Corby. To your sheet, add a mystery key and a cloak of billowing. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> First of all, I'm not going to tell you what you've got. Just add a potion. Right. Trust me, it's a fun one. Jackin, to your sheet. Add clothes of mending and the uncommon barrier tattoo. As you walk and you feel a cork almost in your throat just pop. Okay, weird weight has been lifted. Welcome back to the world of the people who use their voice to communicate. Population plus one. Oh my god. <laughs> does Jack and feel the difference? Yeah, it's almost like something heavy 
and his throat has just vanished with that slap. He's gonna. <clears throat> think you can. I can just. Yeah. Jack and just fucking yells, let's go! <laughs> Fuck you! Fuck you! <laughs> Fuck you! Let's go! Hey, oh man, that's it. I will also point out right now, just, just for the fun of it, I had a lot of items here. I forgot a few things that we had. Uh, oh, yeah, Jack, and also add a ring of attunement to your list. I've totally forgot. Yeah, I had a ton of stuff here. Uh... The more people, the more stuff that we've been given out, I'll be honest, but, uh... The only other- there was one that I'm still gonna give to Grifton later on. I'll find a way to give him that if he's still with us, because... Dear God, it'll be funny. Ah... <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I was looking for some, like, really mundane items. Like, mundane, but fun magic items to give people, you know? And, uh... That just so happened to fit the list. Yeah, how do I add this stuff to my inventory? Uh, you can do it in D&D Beyond by going into your inventory and there's a little bit that says manage. It gives you a search bar and compendium sharing. Um, I've also got it written down. I'm going to rewrite it down as well. I don't think you'll be able to get the ring of attunement, but like... No word of a lie, the ring of attunement, when you attune to it, it gives you another attunement slot. Oh. <laughs> it's like <laughs> you attune to the ring, and you can tune to something else. You attune to the ring that uses an attunement slot, and when you're attuned to the ring, you gain another attunement slot. So essentially, yeah, that... you're just attuned to four items instead of three, but one of them does absolutely nothing. It does do something. It takes up a, a ring slot that you could. That's if you're playing it like that, like. Unless you're a bard, I don't see anyone walking around with ten, like, ten rings on it. At that point there, your bard better be called Slickback. <laughs> he better be voiced like Cat Williams. <laughs> yeah, I'll notate all that down as you get over this way. There's a little thing I've got to read. Over the past four days, the weather on the coastway has worsened gradually. Dark clouds release heavy rains until the roads run thick with mud as you tread on. Passing by, friendly merchant caravans headed to the north. Forgot about that part. On the morning of the fifth day, the rain subsides a little and the dark clouds still remain. Ahead of you, a path branches from the road. Heading to the sea. Upon the perch. This little signpost. You see a raven solemnly perched on the post that bears two signs pointing like arms to the west. One says, the way of the lion. The other says, candle key. Hey, can I cast um, Divine Senses? Uh, sure. You wanna pop that out for me as well, sir? Yes. Uh, assuming that it's related to Candlekeep, can I use- Do I have, like, any, like, past knowledge on, like, this area or, like, what this would be specifically? Mm. For yourself, you know that both points, but both of these tracks lead the same way. At the end, they both have a terminus point at Candlekeep. Just one seems to go past through it. Uh, one is a little bit more dangerous than the other, but there's nothing there's nothing inherently bad about it. You know, people have been mugged on one way um, you know, people have been mugged on the way of the lion, whereas other people going straight to Candlekeep have had a bit more of an open field about them. So, there's been less yeah. muggings. Barring in that, it's all much the same. Uh, Jack, I'm trying to do this. Could you read me the Divine Central quick again, just so I know what you're looking for as well? Uh, Annie, Annie Evil. 
most fiends anything. Desecration. Curses. <laughs> You'd have been pegging a whale. <laughs> uh, let's see. Present evil in the ring. Nothing inherently evil, nor good. No pangs, no smells. All just normal. Does the raven fly off as we approach, or does it stay there? Sets there, just means its own business, you know? Doesn't seem to be... Doesn't seem to be doing anything in that regard. Very much... Just, you know, bobbing left and right, looking. It is also a bit drenched, so... You know, it could be that it's taking some time to... Uh, Rest, I suppose. Uh, make an animal handling check if you like. I oh, know, I was going to class speak with animals with it. Oh, even better. That sounded really cunty, but like it's been a while. As <laughs> 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 you. As you look, as the raven just seems to be bouncing up and down. I don't know. Doesn't seem to be paying much attention to yourselves either, but very What early. time of day is it? Uh, let's go ahead and say it's about early on, and then we'll say 8, 9 a.m. ish. Morning, Kobe says. <sighs> Head tilts. Hello? Hello, oh, my name is Corby. I said that could happen. Hello? I'm... Hugh? Watch, she's all watch is this thing squawking, like, you know, Almost pained in some points, kind of like lifts a little wing and gives like a little, you know, its attempt a wave. What can we do? I'm just gonna like start, you know, knocking on the wood. I was just seeing how you are. But if you have any information about these roads at a point, I think we're heading that that way. Is it looks towards the castle? Whoa. There's a group of people waiting around. Be careful. They are um they seem violent. Violent. These people on two separate paths, you said, yes? Yeah. Uh, let's just say for brevity's sake, it's like a straight diagonal 45 fork. Okay. Are these people on both paths or just on the other? She watches it. <laughs> Flies up for a little moment and does its own like, little circle. Or coming back down. And it perches itself on the one that says the lion's way. This way. There's a. Uh, four. Thank you. Is there anything that I can do for you? I have some food. So oh. I'm willing to help out in other ways. Other ways? Don't know if you want something else or not. <sighs> oh. mm. No! I've got. Would, Just die. Uh, do you like. Oh, yeah. A joke. What? Do you like to play a joke with me? Okay. 
over my shoulder, there's a um, human man with short, dark hair. Mm -hmm. If you were to spend some time just perching on his shoulder and just having accidents down his cloak, that would be rather humorous. <laughs> you cruel bastard. <laughs> you suck so bad. <laughs> Would you be willing to do this for a time? Watch the licks and turns. I'm going that way anyway. Jack and you watch. It's perched on your shoulder, you guys. Yeah. Corby turns around and says, um, the pretty creature has sent to warn us. Um, down this way, the lion's route, there are four people who might be dangerous. But he said that he would accompany us riding on his chosen one. Raven. Named Hugh. Shug the Raven. Thank you. Z. Raven just kind of looks at yourself there, Jack. And just kind of head turns left and right. Wing flaps. Every so often you hear just this. <coughs> in your ear. It's almost deafening. This is where I've got a text saying stop making that noise. <laughs> nope, I'm being told that the dog is licking her paws. Great. <laughs> Valuable. Like a moral. Like a perception check on the morality of another bird. <laughs> that was an insight check, you. <laughs> insight check, the pigeon. <laughs> Q, are you with us there, mate? Q was not with us at that moment. Q time skip. Guess I'm playing too right now. Getting you guys to hell. Yay! <laughs> See, Bird goes to Jackin's jacket. Shits all over him. Use head down the Lion's way. The sun starts to shine through to illuminate the grey sky and walls of a spire. I knew there was a reason I was in here. I knew it. I just I just couldn't figure it out. I have an image to show y'all. Yay, pictures. <laughs> Results. <laughs> As afternoon sun shines through the clouds to illuminate a gr the grey walls and pale spires of a time-worn fortress that stands majestically atop a rocky poro promontory overlooking the sea. Ladies and gentlemen, candle keep. Yay! Home sweet home for us all. I saw. Yeah. I saw the trailer for the D and D movie and thought they were going to fucking Candlekeep. Turns they out done it was... another ship. Was that a sh ship in the city? Um, no, I think that's actually some form of a. No, that actually is a fucking ship. You're right, mate. Maybe it's the one he crashed. It's uh, wizards like putting ships in cities because we've got Baldur's Gate has one. Oh. Briefest moment there when you said wizards, I just like imagined like Morden Kane and standing there like you get a galleon, you get a galleon, you get a skiffer. <laughs> just fall falling from the sky and crashing. Bang. See that's Chol, Astral Sea, Kren, Phandalin. Water deep. Yeah. I had a map. 
He says, holding maps. I think it's folded up in here. It is! There we go. Fucking where? <laughs> this is the map of Candlekeep. That'd be top right. Right, so here's here's the lion's way. All right. So this is where you're coming in. There's the gatehouse. Okay. POV. You're trying to use a map. Okay. Here. Damn, don't they have GPS and candle keep? Get the times. <laughs> it's somewhere around about the pillars of Pregod. Ped pedagogy? Pedagogy? Uh uh. <laughs> 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 don't ask me to fucking spell shit, y'all. Um. Because. Right, so here's the big spirey bit. I'm pointing at it. But. That's the blue bit in the image that's lit up like a fucking tree. Um, yeah, I think it's got something to do with that bit that whose name I can't quite say. It does kind of look like some form of observatory. Who yeah. knows? Kind of cute. The. The only thing I can see in its defence is that Candlekeep Mysteries being a collection of mysteries that aren't very tied is that people say it takes place round about the same time as Baldur's Gate um, but technically speaking it can take place at any point because it's isolated incidents. So yeah. Anyway, use move through the way that you're going. Eventually, you see four humans standing, looking around. They do. They come up to yourselves. You see. Look at you. Oh. No travelers, you've been. It's just a sight for sore eyes. We've been camped out here for, for days trying to get into Candlekeep. I. I don't suppose you. Uh, I don't suppose you have any way for us to join your party to, to enter at all. It would be too kind. See, look at well, dishevelled. Hmm? Look at the set dishevelled lot. As they do, you hear a <coughs> from Jack in shoulder. Well, what exactly are your intents in trying to get into Candlekeep? <sighs> it's knowledge of the the arcane and understanding of the world. All the stuff that one who one who needs to go into Candlekeep would like to have. Well, if you are interested in becoming a researcher or a scholar or anything of the sorts, I'm sure you can find the resources that would allow you to get into its walls. There are certain rules that we have for a reason. If you cannot abide by them, then I simply cannot help you. You, you look like you're, you're going that way. What? Please, could we could we join up with you? As the raven keeps squawking. Please, it. Can't you? You understand, right? It's a once in a lifetime type of deal. We. Please. A once in a lifetime sort of deal is something that you have to earn, no? I cannot give it to you on a silver platter because you asked me nicely. 
you making a stand there? Arms out. It's looking. <sighs> You're right. A once in a lifetime opportunity, and you can't just go handing it out. I suppose you are going to make your way in there anyway. Just go. And he waves his arm across. And starts to slowly walk back to his friends. What are they dressed like? Not well off, but also not poor. They're wearing like some nice clothes, but there are there are a few tear marks in the clothes and definitely some odd patchings. A little bit of dirt on them, but from what you could attest to camping out. There's also no camping gear with them though. Can I make a guess on how long they've been here? Just by like, looking at them in the camp? Mm. About a week. Maybe more. Maybe less, but only by a few days. It has been rather rainy and muddy these past few days, so... You know. A week, give or take two days. Man, get that. Looks at yourself, Corby. You look a decent man. Please tell me you can. Tell me you can help. Ah! <sighs> See, all look. It'll kind of start to spread. Out. Ah, uh, give me an insight check, both of you. Uh, me? Is both of you. Insight checks. Uh, it's not letting me open my sheet, which is weird. Uh oh. Uh, it's in my, it's in my, like, yep. uh, players thing, but I'm clicking on it, it's not funny. That's crazy. Uh, do you want me to roll it for you? Uh, sure. This is where, like, Parcel gets like a nat 20 and we all go nuts. <laughs> Natural 15, close enough. <laughs> you just watch as they are slowly fanning out. You can tell that trouble is being brewed. It does. I would say, as you're watching it, you to tune yourselves to the noise, the listening. You hear one of them say, Right, I'm gonna uh, go ahead now and ask everyone to roll initiative. I'll play the, the two who aren't here. Go figure. Let me know if you can't see anything, by the way, because that'll always be a big problem. Oh no, it loads for me. Sheet still not loading out? Yeah, no, it's like, it's like a highlighting and I'm clicking on it, but nothing's like appearing. Let me try refreshing it. Of course. I'll get us some nice music going. Good point is, after all of this, we go to just, you know, roleplay again. Yay. Just always need to give everybody a little something, you know? Saval so isn't in. Don't see her name in the game. Bottom left where it says players. Gosh. Uh. She did just see a refreshing. Okay, yeah. That makes sense then. I just that was why she could open it. <laughs> to be fair, I did see that there were. Um, I did see that there were names not showing. Why does it it's instantly assume Rhea's a bad guy and change this challenge rating? <laughs> no game. 
Rhea is a good guy. Oh, I'll just fucking play Rhea as well. Speed of it all. Me, yeah. Do you want me to play Griffin or not? Uh, do you want to play Griffin? Does your I can do in combat. Yeah. I'll give you yeah, him for I combat. Uh, Gark is owner and Tom owner. There you go, mate. I can remove a grifting dice now. Let me just like, grab my phone to see what Jack and to hit us. Hooray, my sheet. Okay, yeah, I can see it now. Yay. <laughs> oh, so I just need to get Jack and plus to hit because I'm not opening so many sheets. Oh shit, I'll just start lagging and that's going to be annoying for me. I just remembered that he's not on the D&D Beyond. Is Jack in, in, is Q here? He ain't. I don't know what's happened. Uh... I'll just have to run them or like in. Good news is the rest of it's all roleplay. People will miss out, I can send them stuff that they need. Jackin's two hit is three plus five. Okay. Plus five. Gonna roll all the NPCs. And we're gonna start this. Who said that? I just had to roll my thing because I just had to get done. I, th I thought I heard sorry Jack and speak and I was like, oh who's not rolled in? Rhea and Jack and ah Jack is at the bottom of initiative figures Corby as you hear you hear that little chick, 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 of what sounds like knives being pulled but cursory glance around and these guys' fingernails got pretty long, pretty quick. In the middle, I'm going to cast very fire on them. Uh, just these two here, just getting, so... Uh, two in the middle. Let me go ahead, and these are deck saves for 12. Dos deck save it is coming right up at uh, I'm going to go left, then right. So, left fails... Both fail. Oh, and I'm going to back away. Don't have my F for failed on here, so I'll class them as inspired, even though they are not inspired. Very far, uh, they're just glowing, yeah? yeah. And I think Sorry. that's my turn because I can't do anything else. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Alright. Um... Watch as. My fairy, my fairy fire is just lots of um, glowing ra ravens harassing them. Which is the one that kind of looks round and as they do, starts to just walk towards yourselves. As they do, you watch. As each time they move and walk forward, they seem to change. Jack and has sent me a message. I'm here. Oh. Cool. We're in the middle of the week, combat right now, pal. Uh, you all good? Oh, yeah, yeah. Cool, you shit. I'll close your sheet for you. As you watch as this person walks closer and closer and closer, changing. By the time they get to you, you have watched a horrendous, horrendous change from nice civilized man to fucking werewolf. What? And uh yeah, I'll go ahead and take a little, little, you know, you know, you look, you look like a snack. It's 22 for 7. Could you do me a favour, please? This is a small one. Oh. Could you set it to private GM role? Yeah. We'll make a con save. Okay. Cool. I did a blind, whatever. Oh, don't worry. Pass. I swear, I uh, uh, swear, private that way, me and Farcival could see it. Uh, but it looks like they were rolling blind, so they didn't see it. So let them yeah. know. Rhea is going to be like, oh my god, guys. Oh my god. Going to run up to this, sees what's going on. Isn't too. Isn't too, she's got a plus five to hit as well, let's be honest here, it's really nice. Uh, she's going to take two swings and we'll hit on a 16, miss on a 10, 16 for six, takes a little swing. 
and gives the target. Yeah, watch their eyes narrow. Farcible, you're up. Uh, these ones are right there, so I can just hit both of them at once. Spellcasters, um... am I right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, here we go. Oh. Shit, you don't need to be rolling private for that. Uh, shatter, DC con D oh, DC 15. Change it. Oh, yeah, don't worry. Con save, one on the left fails, one on the right passes, full damage to the first one, half damage to the second one. Uh, you, man, that's just, that's, oh. I wish that was better for you. 3d8 and you managed yeah. to roll 1 8. Oh, god damn it. Did you get that? from the area and you watch this, they both kind of seem to you know be affected but one of them they start bleeding from the fucking ear did anything else your turn? oh um I'll it will let me move that would be great what happened? hello? if need be uh, just use your arrow keys do a tom arrow key it back back Oh, it says it's 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 not my turn, so. It is your turn, though. It's not like... It says movement is set to combat turn. It is currently not your turn. Try now. No. Where do you want to move to? Yeah, uh, peg it, and I'll I'll drag you. I was just I was just gonna move like two spaces back. So just uh, jump ten foot back. You do. Did it announce your turn? Uh, nope. Commoner, air quotes, whose name's changed, but I think we all know what's good. Will once more make its way to Grifton. As it does, goes from a walk initially, to down on all fours, running, sprinting. As it does, jumps at Grifton with a huge slash. What's their multi-attack like again? Ah. A huge slash 13 misses Grifton, if I'm correct. Yeah, does get an AC at 20. <whistles> Go ahead and just move over to Grifton right now. Um, oh, for this action, yep, it's going to go large. I got you. And then he's going to hit the one that's just attacked him, his mace. Oh, okay. 15 for 10, and is that plus 3 additional damage, like rage, or...? Yes, yes it is. Okay, and 15 for 13. Then he's going to activate his fire rune. Uh... DC 13 strength save. He fails. He is restrained. Uh and he takes 10 fire damage as well. And takes 10 fire. There we go. Mm -hmm. Did anyone else your turn there? It's 10. No. Okay. Now, Fairy Fire, not a spell many people use around me. Um, so you're going to have to explain the intricacies of what happens if I leave this box. Uh, you are still affected by it. We have advantage on it until I lose concentration. You have advantage on anybody that failed the save. Only failed. I have advantage on. We have advantage. We have advantage on attacks. Even if they're out of the box because they failed. Cool. Because they're covered in it. Like they so say, the equivalent is um, the, the ravens follow them. Ah. You explain it better than anybody else has ever explained it to me. Thank you. <laughs> Every single time Corby attacks, I literally have no idea what the hell he's saying, but he's doing a lot of damage. So I don't really care. <laughs> The one here comes running at yourself, Jack, and as it does, it's gonna go ahead and take a little uh, a little nom 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 because you a snack. That's a nat one. We, d we don't talk about nat ones. Or Bruno. It didn't taste good. Next one comes sprinting towards Grifton, and as it does, no, runs tr just as it gets to him opens its mouth, you watch the snout extends forth into that wolf-like form. Like American werewolf in London. 
and uh, just as the transformation completes, takes a little bite into Grifton. They don't roll well against Grifton, but Grifton rolls well against them. Jackin, anything with a little inspiration tag, bar farce of all, uh, you have advantage on attacking. So I have advantage on all of the, the one beside me. Um, the one beside yeah. Grifton, yep. And technically the yeah. other one by Grifton because it's restrained, but, you know. Yeah, so bonus action, I'm going to cast um, Thunder Smite. Alright. Actually, two D six. That's not my action. I can still use a spell, can't I? No, that there is a spell. Oh, you can't use two spells in one go. Two leveled spells. Which yeah. One? You could use a cantrip classed use... as an action, but you can't use any normal spell. What are the um, smite kind of? A standard smite is additional, so I believe you could. Bonus action, Thunder Smite, slash, if you hit, Smite. I believe that's possible. Okay, so I'm gonna hit with my long sword and Smite at the same time. 24 for 6, plus 1 Poison, plus 10 Thunder, and... Can I smite? You can Smite, um, I don't think, correct me no, if I'm don't, wrong. don't need it. You, oh, you don't need it? I do. No, uh, what are you gonna say? I was going to say, I don't know if you can use your um, your Warlock spell slots for it. It's not not too clued up on spellcasting as a multicaster. You can. It's one of the reasons why they're powerful. So yes, you can use any yep. spell slots for it. Cool, cool. Uh, we are continuing my education. <laughs> so if you want to smite, you can. Currently you're on 17 damage on this guy. Actually, I'll just leave it at that. I'm not going to smite. He has to make a strength save as well. He saves, so he is not not prone or pushed ten foot away from you. So can you that? <coughs> yeah. I can That's just it. for because you had advantage on your attack. If you click on the plus button on the attack roll to the right, just in case you get a crit. Yeah, sure. Close. It was a natural nineteen, though. To be fair, so the odds yeah. were. Did I announce your turn there, mate? Yeah, it's my turn. Corvid. A Corby's going to fire his bow against the um, wolf to the right of Jackin. Oh, Tom meant to yeah. say, I think the arrow thing should be fixed now. Apparently it was fixed in the oh. latest update on uh, the D&D system as a whole. Oh, let us, let us see. You have seven arrows right now, so once you've fired, we'll see if it's there. Uh, I was actually going to use my silvered arrows. Of which you have 67. 67. Is that because you doubled it or just because you bought a shit ton? I forget. I bought a shit ton. <laughs> that tracks. <laughs> <laughs> so we get 67. Let's see what happens when we fire, boys and ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. We got an attack roll. Um, we also didn't use an arrow, apparently. Uh, it's because it's not classed as ammunition. And I think that's the. I think that's the issue, but don't worry, I'll resolve that. Uh, 24 4 will hit, however, and it's the. What one was it again? The one to the right of Grifton, but I'm also going to use my Swarmkeeper magic to do a swarm on it. Okay. Is that the one Another that you sh should have advantage on, or the one you, sh you don't? Uh, the one I have advantage on, yeah, sorry. Okay. In case, no. So, uh, you want a strength save or just additional damage? It's additional damage. So it's six additional damage to well six six total damage to this bad boy. You're snarling and whimpering, but and I'm gonna head back. Yeah, it's my turn. Commoner is gonna go ahead and gonna get in an advantageous position. Is it gonna? Pirouette is a, a word that I like because it sounds funny to say around Rhea towards Grifton. Is it not Grifton? Jacken. As it does, runs a finger across Rhea and then immediately tries to snap at uh, Jacken's Jill. Uh, Rhea, eight for nine, total fucking miss. 
jacking 9 for 10 total fucking miss. If Sensei tried to attack Rhea, I get opportunity to attack. Yes, you do. Uh, which one is it? The... This one behind you. Yeah, so I'm just gonna attack with the long sword. Regular attack. I guess might on any. Um. Top. Yes, if you hit. Your thundering smite, I know, would hundred percent be on here, so you can roll two d six if you want. Currently, you're on. Eight. I think I think thundering smite's the next hit, so I think that's gone. Uh, first no, thing, I mean, uh, like a normal smite. Uh, you can do oh. a normal smite. Yeah. Oh, you can. Oh, thundering Eight. smite is only it lasts a minute, but it's a well, minute until cancel. you it's a minute until you hit, and then it's gone. If you hit with this, yes, you can do a, a smite smite. You can. I'm gonna let you know right now. Twelve hits. Okay, I wanna smite. If I could find it. Werewolves, absolutely crazy. Low AC. No way. Where is smite? Uh, it, did I put it in your spells? I did at the very bottom of your first level spells. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna roll just 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 for your own safety, I'm gonna roll four flat D twenty here. I'll let you know how many hit. No mods. All four of them. They are crazy fuck like they're 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 crazy, but they're also crazy fucking weak. Uh, bottom of your spell slots, mate. Click on Divine Smite. It's in blue. Oh, yeah, I see it. For an additional 9 Radiant. So, 8, 9, 4... No, not 14, Matthew. Don't correct me. <laughs> 17 total damage. So, you're going to bring it down and then you... <laughs> as it's taking a swipe. At Rhea... Turns around, gives you a little thank, a little nod. Uh, how's her multi attack again? Gotta love NPCs. Um, she takes her longsword and just starts cutting through like butter to the top, which you know she knows is still good for her. So swings at the top. That's a nat twenty, and immediately swings at the one next to Jack. Oh my fucking god! That's two nat twenties. Glad you all on her. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, one at the top takes that, one at the bottom takes that. Um, we're all very thankful that I rolled on an NPC that's helping you, and Rhea gives you a little nod. Just fucking feeling herself, y'all. She's, she's <laughs> feeling herself, farcible. Uh, I'm going to attack the one that's like on the right next to Grifton on his right. Uh, yep. Cat. There you go. Toll the Dead, a fun spell that I love very much. As you can do that, boom, you watch, it just kind of seems to ears perk up and turns towards you, unfazed. Saved. Damn it. Didn't uh, um, Not at the moment, no. Hmm. Alright, Tom, this one that's um stuck here is it just like straight stuck does it have action to do stuff off that or as action as movement is zero it takes 2d6 fire damage at the start of its turn okay then at the end of its turn it can make another strength save to break so the, it really can't do anything else but take damage and try to break away no no oh. no still hit still um, attacks yeah you can try and break out if you want or you can still attack um but you are you're restrained so. ah so restrained yeah, I'm gonna need like I've got need like an actual DM screen one of these days just so I remember these ones because I am yeah. Your legs are basically stuck to the ground, but you can still do whatever. That's an elegant way to attack. So it would attack with disadvantage is the one thing that we'd not mention. Well it will still, you know. Do you all the damage or? Yeah, uh sorry, two D six for eight. Cool. Let's go ahead and snarl and whimper and snap at Grifton twice just because, you know, he's done this. How dare he? And Grifton's AC is higher than 16. Jesus Christ, he's at 20 AC. Grifton's obviously seen...
Uh, he gets a saving throw at the end of his turn to see if he can break free of the shackles. Strength? Strength one, yeah. DC? 12, I think. Uh, th 13. 15 breaks free. So he's no longer affected by that. Okay. So Grafton's just going to re-affect him by Asim? <laughs> he can't now, but oh. what I am going to do is use my Shieldmaster feet to try and shove him. Uh, strength check 12. Yeah, but I get advantage on it. Oh. So what do you do here? Uh, we do contested um, fault to knock him prone. Oh, so uh, is there a contested strength or a ab ability check instead? Okay. Yeah, that's fine. There you go. At my house was 16. Uh, natural 20. Okay, so he's not not prone. I thought you had a advantage still... on him. Yeah, I did, but I did the top one. Ah. Uh, so a 12 and a 16. I'm going to use my silvered mace of the metal god, need whatever. <laughs> what the fuck is up with the Nate guys? <laughs> and because I'm large, I'll get 2D there. additional negative 6 on his hit points. You look at this, he's battered and bruised, whimpering, blood. There's some breaks, he's not looking good. And I'm going to use action Surge to attack at him. An 11 is... will hit. Playing D&D &D with Tom is like going over to your friend's house and playing on their Xbox, like the game that they finished five times, and they're just like telling you how to play. All right, uh, it's not fair, because I've, I've played this character in another campaign. Uh, that makes sense. <laughs> this car, so I know how it works. <laughs> it's great. People know what they're doing. I'm more than happy for them to like, do things to expedite combats. I know, it's super cool. <laughs> I just don't know how. Do anything else with your turn there, Tom? Uh, that's it. I've been getting into it as well. My campaign that I play in, I'm running a Rangers. Like just because I'm now getting into it, I feel like I can. Yeah. I can feel I can get like a a turn, a round off as a Ranger, pretty quickly. But to be fair, favoured foe, attack, attack, end turn. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's just rolling dice, rolling damage. Uh, big bad boy here, we're going to call him Jim Bob. Uh, he's going to go ahead and just see what's going on, understands the brevity of the situation, and is going to sprint towards Farcible, just <laughs> gnawing and snarling. Uh, Jack and that does provoke opportunity of attack if you wish to take it. Can I use my reaction to Sentinel, the head, whoever hit Rio? Oh yeah, it's not your turn, you're right, cool. Uh, I got a natural 7 here, plus 5. 7 plus 5 is actually, that hits. That hits. Ah, oh, I'm so used to just shit not hitting 1d10 plus 3 for 9 big owies on this bad boy here. As he runs, claws up at yourself, Farcible, and tries to bite in at the same time with a fainting attack. Fainting attack. Uh, 22 for 7 on the slash, 16 for 8 on the bite. Um... Private GM roll con save, please. You're not concentrating on anything, so I'll just take 15 health clean off you. Okay. Do you mind? Never. Standing here, man. I don't mind. Uh, <laughs> this bad boy here, we'll call him, I don't know, Billy Bob. Billy Bob, we're going to go ahead and take a swing, swing, swing at Grifton. Followed by a big fat noshing. Uh, 19, oh, 19 misses. 19 misses, Matthew. Jackin. Uh, I'm gonna swing at the wolf beside me. Uh, I'm gonna smite as well. Yeah. An eight will sadly miss. Uh, bonus action, I'm going to cast Hacks. Okay. On the one beside me. And you are... When, I don't know why I think Hex is something else. I'm thinking it's like... Curse. So uh, it takes an additional 1d6 necrotic damage whenever you hit it. Cool. Did anything else your turn? 
Yeah, that's it. Yeah, we move back over to Corby. Uh, I'm going to switch targets and shoot Silver Arrow at um, one that's next to Farcival. Yep. Advantage on it, I believe. Yep. I don't think they get another save on your Fairy Fire Assist until you drop con. Yep. 12 for 11. That is max damage. Beautiful. Um, you can roll two attacks. Uh, no, no, I, I double clicked. Uh, well, we'll take your first roll anyway, and a 12 for 11 will hit. 14 for 11 is muy bien. Do you... Um, and I'll do the Gathered Swarm again, which does another D6 damage. Oh, oh, Tom. It's beautiful. As you kind of hit it, as you watch a few seconds, whoosh, the ravens seem to rip this thing apart as you hear it howl off before and collapsing. Probably just save first then I'll, life. <laughs> then I'll just... Wait, sorry, by the way, on my turn, uh, um, with the hacks, I'm going to choose strength. Disadvantage on strength checks. Is that, is that, oh, never mind. Is that an ability ability check now? What ability? So is that like strength or is that like perception and shit? Acrobatics and shit. Oh, never. Uh, acrobatics. Okay. Sorry there, Tom, when you go. Um, could, I don't know. I'm a bit slow. Could you just move me three squares diagonally away? Three squares diagonally yeah. backwards. Coming up. Uh, 15 foot. Yep, that's it. There you go. Yeah. Keep stepping back from the action. I'll roll us over to uh, Billy Bob Thornton over here. It's going to go ahead and take a swing at Rhea and a chomp at Jack. And I think Rhea's the only one getting hit there. No, no, no one's getting hit there again. It's going to claw comes in and bites over towards Jack. And, but not a thing. As Rhea kind of looks around and uh, just takes two swings with her longsword. That's a natural one, followed by a 18 for 8. So you watch, comes in, looks like a fane, swings down. <laughs> blood all over the place. First of all, dead dog at your feet. Uh, I'm going to... I'm trying to remember how much, like, health each one has. Um... Uh... Is... Can you tell, like, is the one next to Rhea, like, almost dead? Or, like, how... Oh, they... Just as fucked up as the one that you can just kind of see through Grifton's legs. The one standing next to Grifton, however, he, he looks fine in comparison, but these other two are knock, knock, knocking. I hit All the right. one beside me for trying to hit Rhea, by the way. Yep, it, I took the damage off. Oh, here. Alright, so I'll attack the one that looks fine. You have advantage on that one as well. Sick. Oh, main spike does not come with advantage or disadvantage, however, but wisdom saving throw. Not the wisest of creatures as you watch it starts to whimper in pain all of a sudden. Uh, failed save, also to the target's location wherever it ends. Same plane of existence. Kill, kill, kill. Yep. So you, you know a lot more about this creature than I would, I would like to care. Did I answer your turn there? Uh... No. Commoner. Don't know why I was waiting for someone else to take a turn. This is clearly me. I'm gonna go ahead, take a slash and a bite. Both 14s, both miss. And as Grifton just stands there towering over like the um the jolly green giant that he is. Corby, as Grifton. Uh so Grifton will do another bash with his shield. It's yeah. uh, contested athletics or strength. Okay, and that is a Seven fail. Advantage. So, ten foot back and prone. No, no, just prone. Just prone. Either or. Yeah, it's either or. You can either knock him back five feet or knock him prone. prone. And then I'm going to try and hit him with my metal mace. Covered mace. Anything for advantage? Here we go. Oh. We fishing? Yeah. It's a bit slow. It's okay, so you're gonna bring it down and ring can you hear that? It does. Yes. You're gonna bring it up. There's nothing but brain left on here. 
This creature's lies are twitching. His nerve connection seem to fire for the final time. Like the sound I think of a Minecraft was... dog dying. <laughs> I think Griffin would turn to look at the other one next to him and just start chuckling. Give me intimidation. It's giving psychopath. <laughs> That's Christian, so yeah. <laughs> well, and he's proficient in it. Well, Fucking look at him, why would he not be proficient in it? Yeah, true. No um, straight jacket could hold him. <laughs> yeah, it uh, turns out. It's, it's, he, yeah. It's Gark's charisma rolls. Yep. Plus two as well, plus two. This was a natural 18 for 18 as Griffin just stands there menacingly laughing, but um, yeah, well, the werewolf is equally as fucked in the head and seems to enjoy it. <laughs> Masochism, ladies and gentlemen, not even once. <laughs> Did anything else with your turn? That's it. Uh, we're going to move over to this one here who is now in the free of it. Yeah, he's smart enough not to. Gonna go ahead, take a non well, you know, a claw and little munch once more. Uh, the claw twenty one for ten, the bite nineteen for nine, so twenty one for ten on Grifton. Yeah. Uh, just in case you had anything else there, because I know Rune Fighters could do some mad stuff. Yeah, actually, let, let's let's do it. Let's use this cloud rune. Make that attack hit trend. Alright. I don't know what level you got this at, so I was like, oh, what's going on? I just crack it off and it just goes, just instantly goes, doesn't even bother you. Uh, hit a creature, 30 foot. When your creature receives a 30 foot, have an attack roll, new reaction, it's just a different creature. <laughs> no, no, you. Uh, so you're going to do the hand thing, I don't know how it goes, but kind of watches, you hear this <laughs> Jack and you watches though Grifton is swiped at um, the one next to you drops dead <laughs> even he's confused, looking at his claws looking at Jackin How healthy does this last one look? Um, considerably better than the one that was next to you has been. I little cuts and bruises. He's gonna require a lot of attention. I'm gonna do something fun. I'm gonna use. Oh <laughs> I'm gonna use command. I. It's your command. Aww, he can use his words now. <laughs> What? Revert. Re oh. Oh, that is. Did you watch as he. Back to a. a human. Um. Jack and just holds his sword to his. little human body. Well, that's my turn. Corby, the wolf turns human as Jack and holds a sword to its throat. Mm. I don't know what the play is here, but I'm uh, I'm interested. I would like like an insight check against Jacken's intentions. Are you wanting to? Like sort of like capture or make this one surrender, or are you just trying to make it? To I'm kill? just doing this on. I'm just doing this on the fly. Um, yeah, let's capture him. Oh, do I? Mm. Uh, you can tell me. Do I? I think the seventeen. I'll probably read you. Seventeen. I'd say um, is a good read. Well, I guess, it seems like I'm trying to hold him hostage to a degree. I guess. <laughs> Uh, then I will, um, be an attack, shoot it if it 
if it doesn't surrender. And I'll move closer. My turn. Uh, did you already move or do you need me to move you, mate? I think it's lagging, yeah, so just six or seven squares towards possible, please. Uh, full 30 foot? Well, 35 foot move. Alright, full so, 35. Yeah. Maybe you. Within five foot of forcible. So we're gonna move okay. to Rhea, who's gonna go ahead. Uh, watch as she looks. Ain't too sure. She's gonna hold an action. Forcible. Just getting like an inch closer or two, but not too close. Yeah, that's about it. Grifton, are we gonna get one of those wise Grifton insight checks or wisdom checks out of curiosity? <laughs> no. Grifton is just going to turn around and hit it with his mace, because he's not the understand smartest. what's happened. Uh, that was a charisma save, right, Jacken? Yeah, Wisdom. I think so. Wisdom saving throw. Oh, 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 oh! An eight will miss. There you go. <laughs> the gods are on your side, boys. Um, as you know, that we command only works for one turn. So our our bad boy here. I'm just gonna make sure he's got his number. So. I'm just going to roll for standard attacks um, and then I'll use this to damage that it should be rather than the damage that I get because he's just got the same plus to hit anyway so it's in a human form, shakes it, turns off and this only lasts for one round, correct me if I'm wrong, so mm, turns around and punches Jack in the nose. Or tries, he kind of swings away and misses. Jack. Um, I think Corby's arrow would then shoot off. Yeah, he's I, not really didn't know. I didn't know where I was going with this, I'll be honest. But uh... <laughs> Rhea will also like fire it. off her held action, 12 for 2. Sorry, I know this is the like middle of combat, but oh. what, was this, oh. what was the scenario that made this happen? Warning dialogue. Oh yeah, shit. Uh, you were you have a crow on your shoulder? A raven, sorry. Um Corby spoke with the Raven. Raven said there were some people who were not being who were, who were kind of being a bit weird this way. Uh you encountered them. They were trying to get into candle keep. Turns out that maybe they're just muggers or in this case, uh hungry, hungry werewolves. Um I'm gonna like this, this, try to cut this world off with my sword with the intention to knock unconscious. So you're doing non lethal damage, is what you're saying? Yeah. Okay. Uh, you want to roll me a d20 whilst you're at it there, mate? Just flat d20. Oh, I have a d10 selected, but. Oh, oh wrong one. No, it's a uh, d Oh, imagine rolling the same twice. <laughs> really shits on you, mate. So sitting on your shoulder, shits, and then goes, ah! But it's, it's also happy to be there. Uh, 24, so because you're going to do non-lethal, I'm not going to do the poison. 24 for 5, change the slashing to bludgeoning. And you're kind of just back in, you know, naughty, naughty, smack, smack. Last thing you want to do is kill them with poisoning. Did it else your turn? Yeah, yep. Yeah. Okay. Corby. Uh, I'm going to do the same thing. Arrows to the knee. I'm going to... Yeah, because... I, mean, I don't think I'd twig that you're... I mean, you haven't said anything like, for it to surrender, have you? I don't care if you kill it, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> I used a spell that let me talk just so I could talk. Is that what, you, is that what you're saying to us? Yeah. <laughs> it actually was, yeah. I just wanted to do it. He's been dying. I use magic. <laughs> He's been dying to talk for like 12 sessions. Uh, yeah. So that's uh, Silver Arrow, another 9 damage. Yep. 
pretty sure I took that point. He's gonna fire off. Hits. You're the whimpering of a man this time. Did it not sweetheart? Oh, that's it. Roll over Rhea, who's going to come in with her longsword, making two attacks. Uh, she's going to move in, do her swipe. One misses. There's advantage on them. One hit. Oh, yeah, shit. That's a nine, and that's still an 11. Takes a big swing and a bash. Swish, swash. Well, in that case, then, Corby, you have a 25. That should have been rolled into it, and Jack in as well. We are all completely forgetting about our advantages here. It's we're adults and we're doing great. Wouldn't Grifton not have had advantage on that guy then as well? Yeah, but I forgot, so it's fine. That's right. Uh, Rhea does that. First of all, standing in the body of a dead um, warwolf. I'm trying not to die, and I also have an obligation, so... <laughs> uh, I, th I think you still get advantage on that. Correct me if I'm wrong? Uh, yeah, you do. Cor Corby's yeah, got well. advantage, you've got advantage. Oh, well. It says lethal or non-lethal damage, out of curiosity. Uh, what? Lethal or non-lethal damage? Um... Say non-lethal. And for as you fire off... Makes the funny eldritch noise blast noise, as boom, <laughs> you watch the creature falls to the ground, completely sparked and unconscious. I'm really curious as to where this is going to go. Can I shackle the werewolf with my manacles? Yeah, it's unconscious. Go ahead. I'm just going to go. Enjoy it. Oh, you. Col Colby walks up and just touches first of all. And heals. Hello and hi and welcome. So, let's get to our advert break. Firstly, a good place to pause if you need to, pick up the next time. Now, we are available on Patreon and we are available on Copy and the link is above. We are also advertised our good friends at Adventuron. Now, Adventuron is a D&D 5e community. Uh, essentially, you can join there as a DM or as a player and play numerous games or host numerous games of D&D a day. That can be either a play by post or a live game, you may only have mobile, you may only have virtual access, but either way, there's guaranteed to be a game for you, or even if you're just looking for tips or to connect with people who are of a similar mind, join here, link in the description. Third and final, before we get back to it, is the schedule. Remember that on Mondays at 7 pm UK, 2 pm EST, we have Dragonlance. On a Tuesday at the same time, we've descent into Avernus, and on Saturdays at the same time, we have. Find the elven below the shattered obelisk. We'll see you then. Till then, let's get back to this scheduled programming. And both me, I like to imagine throughout this entire session. I don't know why, but just based off the way that he's been played this session, maybe it's just the way that I have been. But I can just imagine for some reason he's like he looks like he's tired. Like he looks like he's one inconvenience away from being on the news. <laughs> but he just which, like... which he's... Do you have any strong feelings about coming back to Kendall? Um, I don't know. I I think his whole like everything related to Candle Keep is very very complicated. But re regardless, he sort of just like something to thank you. Like he just like thanks both of you with a little nod. But first of all, his whole relationship with Candle Keep is very very complicated. It's like it's where he grew up and it's his home place, but also they didn't treat him that well, and they don't really like him there, but, like, they like him sometimes, so they pretend like they do, so that's good enough for him. So I'm very curious what we're doing with a uh, werewolf and manacles. I mean, I'd like to start off by picking it up. I'm noticing a theme here. You pick up the... Uh, the werewolf, the unconscious. Griffin walks over to the shackled, manacled werewolf, something out of his um, bag, and he puts it on it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that is, that is perfect. Oh! <laughs> you know, like how in The Walking Dead, Michonne has like the zombies and the leashes. It's like that. <laughs> 
fucking Michonne over here. <laughs> we got a fucking... <laughs> we got a fucking werewolf. A leash. <laughs> He's walking. <laughs> We're pimps, like, what the so fuck? so unserious. <laughs> we are fucking pimps. <laughs> It's a very serious campaign, guys. There's a whole setting that's been dragged to hell. I want to take that. Can I pet that now? <laughs> that's just. <laughs> it's like if you. It's like if you hired a bunch of comedians. You know what it is? There's an. There's a film from years ago called Delta Farce. And it's a bunch of the redneck comedians from America, like Larry the Cable Guy and shit, who get drafted into the Viet- like, get drafted into like, the Iraq-Afghanistan war. They're asleep on the plane, they need, like, the guys fly in the plane need to lighten the load. They end up getting shooted out and they think they're in Iraq, but they're actually- actually in Mexico. That's yous. <laughs> Dude, it's just like this 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 guy who looks pretty normal. He's like shooting at them and actually doing damage, along with like Rhea, again, who is like actually doing damage and like rolling nat twenties. And there's just this guy like putting this like werewolf in like a leash and like getting it to subdue, and there's just this really, really hired tiefly man standing like just like straight over a body covered in blood. Looking like he'd rather be anywhere else. <laughs> One male than convenience so away. Dude, he doesn't even look- he, it's- I like to imagine that he doesn't even look, like, extremely upset. He just looks so tired. He's just one- he's- he's ones. He just looks like he's about to spiral. But he's fine. This is just his constant state. Yeah, um... Jackin, what are your intentions with my werewolf? First, we have to give him a name. I'm just wondering how much I'm just wondering how much a werewolf would go for, how much gold it's worth. Right, so slavery, got it. <laughs> <laughs> no, what I mean. Like I'm sure there's a noble out there that would pay a good amount of money for a werewolf. Harm not the innocent, but trafficking is okay. <laughs> like have you ever have you ever seen the Colosseum? Like where like the how like I don't know, I just think it'd be worth a lot. Someone needs to tell your patron on you! <laughs> I'm gonna fucking call your parents home! <laughs> you ain't gonna Fuck. believe what he's doing! I think he's fine with patron. For work. <sighs> it's fucking... Maybe we need to trade patrons. Maybe, maybe, maybe <laughs> this is better for you. <laughs> Hey, we're right next to the sea. You want to experience it too? Just fucking push them <laughs> off a cliff. Just dive down deep enough, you'll get there. Oh. So are you, are you headed off the candle keep, or are you, like, you going to try and interrogate this guy? A asking for myself. Are they unconscious? Unconscious, but you could wake him up. I'd say it wouldn't be hard. Can we just carry him to candle keep? He wanted to go there. What makes you think we're gonna like? They're gonna. <laughs> what makes you think Candle Keep is gonna let you bring in your shackle fucking werewolf? This is our friend. First of all, it disappears. All, it disappears for like four months and then comes back covered in blood, being like, "Can we keep my werewolf in here?" I mean, you, you never know. There could be a bounty for the werewolves. I promise I'll look after him, clean up, and feed them. <laughs> <laughs> she's gonna come back and Rupert's gonna like put a mechanism in his organs. He's gonna rename him Archimedes. <laughs> ow! Ow! <sighs> My face. Okay, no, I'll, I'll try to wake the werewolf up. Yeah, wake up this human, yeah, dazed and looking. Ah. Uh, What's your name? Um, uh, yes. Um, Very creative name. Jazz. Mm, Reg. No, it's not. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> I feel so bullied by that statement. <laughs> your name is your your name is Patrick. <laughs> Bro, what's going on now? <laughs> See, guys, I'm excited. <laughs> And you are. Oh, I'm not going to say that. I'm Jackin. <laughs> and you are Patrick. Will you let me go? Alright, let's come with us. <laughs> it's like there's a few broken teeth now, it's one of like, <laughs> falls out. I stand Patrick up and say, you're coming with us, let's go. You know, like, wobbly on the ground. Huh? Tries to mm. walk off, you know, what Griff, you know, mm. no looks at him, where are we going? Under the keep, is it? Under the keep? Yeah. Uh, why? Why are we going again? So I was. He wanted to go in there. Oh, the werewolf. Yeah, the werewolf <coughs> wanted to go into Candle Keep. Fartival said he probably couldn't because he didn't have the stuff, so they attacked us. So. <laughs> now we can take right. him to Candle Keep. Imagine yeah, trying to mug it. someone by, like, persuading them and you get told skill issue. <laughs> So, you approach the gates of Candlekeep. Mm. It takes a while. Um, Greg slash Patrick spends most of the time complaining. <laughs> As you do, you make it there. You're met by three monks in purple robes. A human, a dwarf, and an elf. Around their necks hang the holy symbol of Denir, god of writing. The symbol is a lit candle above an open eye. The elf looks at us. Welcome to Candlekeep. A gift is required for those seeking admittance. Even those returning, you must donate a book or a scroll to a library that we do not already have in the archives. The dwarf looks. Um, present sorry. your gift. I'm the one that has the book on me, right? For sure. Uh, let's call this party inventory, and someone has the book, and whoever says they has the book has the book. I. I'll just grab it then. Um, I'll take it out of wherever it's being stored and just sort of hand it to them. You do the look at the book. You look at it, you watch. They all place their hands on it, close their eyes. You watch as the Holy symbols round their neck seem to mm. glow. You see them walk away and place the book in a little sort of box by the side. The elf nods and throws his arms up and as you do, he watches these huge wooden gates with like metal stripes just seems to creak open. As you do, you watch this grand staircase leads up into a large but empty courtyard with another gate at the other end of it. You see that on the battlements and such there are numerous mages that seem to walk round. They are 
almost inconspicuous and you'd assume they're just normal people at first but there's something behind them i think i do we have this map here which is a point where someone then goes well i can't see it but bish bash bosh hopefully we can all see it a rough indication as to where things are let's go ahead and we'll just use um let's use the grifting token to indicate where you are just enter into the courtyard and up into the second courtyard as one gate behind you closes this large one opens up once more around there's a little signpost with all manner of small places you see a large building off to one side yeah the huge chimney in the middle numerous people walking in and out all manner of people walk around the cobblestoned area with the wall seemingly towering up and up and up to that gleaming point in the sky that kind of beacons blue if you look at the huge amounts of stairs that lead into this place where would you like to go um Arsenal just sort of like looks around and you can tell that he's just sort of like taking everything in. He like he doesn't notice that anything really specifically changes, but you know, anything sort of changes when people are around and he hasn't been for a little bit of time, but he's like um he speaks up for him and he's like, I can reasonably take you to wherever we need to go if we're looking for someone. I can't promise you that I can take you to exactly whatever she is, but um it seems that we'll probably be here for a little bit, and Cantor Keep is very vast and has lots of resources, so if there is anything that we would want to do first, or things that we would like to explore, then that would be fine as well. I haven't thought of a name for the shop, but it's there just in case. Shop. <coughs> Gems can we likely to we likely to spend a day or two here while we wait to see a name Elvira Vira Silvira I, I would just go with Silvira like Elvira which is a reference I probably shouldn't get <laughs> We do have to stay. Where would we sleep? Mm. Uh, a hearth. You know that yourself. I'll give you that information there. The hearth is like a, a city tavern, but the city is simply candle keep. But it does have spare rooms for those who are staying. You know, as honoured guests. You know yourself at sea. It's an almost fine establishment. The joys of, you know, upper class eating and drinking at, you know, lower class prices. Would, uh, would Parcel have his own area, so to speak? Because he doesn't live here anymore, but he did, like, grow up here. And, like, did live here for the majority of his life. So, like, did he, would he have an area that he belongs to him? Or has it been, like, sold off at this point? He's only been gone for like a month or so, but still. No, no, I'd say you would have your own study and such in the Great Library. It'd definitely be something yeah. that you have, um, as you were just out doing your own thing, you know, taking in the world, but you are still technically of Candlekeep. You still have that regency yeah. and importance, as the, I suppose the phrases I'm looking for. It's up. Your choice where you wish to go, you just uh, ping your location. What I'll do is I'll drop a Corby, uh, a Jacken, and a Farcible, and just always assume at any given time, uh, Farcible, you were given hit points by Jacken. It was like 15, was it not, you gave Jacken? Uh, it was 15, and then I think Corby also gave me 4, but. There you go. 
Nice. Um, I mean, Farcival, like, I'd say he probably just like follow wherever the group is going because he's been here before, so he doesn't really like. He's just sort of making sure that like either no one gets lost or like you know just sort of keeping an eye on everything. So wherever wherever anyone else goes, I'm following. Time of day is it? Um, uh, at this point, I'd say about maybe. Say two two p.m. three p.m. ish. What about that time? It's late afternoon, almost early evening. First of all, I, I don't know this place. The person we were sent to speak to. Important enough that we would need to make an appointment, or can we just go and find them? Uh, what what would be the status? Because there's like the combination of how important is she versus my relationship with her, and like. Like, because, you know, there's, like, the different factors of, like, how Varsival individually is close to her, which I don't know. You, you're not sent here personally. You're sent here by military. So, yeah. you know, any pretense of needing an appointment or such, you know, living fist military people. It's like... You've got that as definitely something you can try. Uh, leveraging a friendship is also fine. Um, barring in that, most of the time it's people studying or people training, learning, or doing book stuff. Absolute nerd shit, this place, let's be honest here. Yeah. And, and we're playing D&D, so think about that. <laughs> I mean, look at the party member that's from here. He kind of sticks out. Um... Uh, he just sort of like thinks to him, thinks to himself for a second. Just, uh, it depends, but I think it would be safe to assume that we could probably seek her out if we need to, given our status, um, combined with our purpose and as well as our my um, familiarity with the surroundings. It should be relatively easy to find her. Um, I have no problems with taking us there directly right now. Um, I was just curious if perhaps you needed a break. I know we just got out of combat and such, so... Um, I was most likely just going to follow wherever you all went, if that was a break or if we are just going to head straight into the objective. You were the one most hurt, but all good. You just wander around this place and go everywhere? Mm, that's fine. You're gonna make me pull out the map, aren't you, Tom? <laughs> I was thinking more along the lines of are there obvious, like, guards walking around? <clears throat> to yourself, you can make out that they are guards simply because they all seem to be on some form of patrol but to like the untrained eye these could be mistaken for any other archmage mage monk or student that happens to be here it's very no, much not armored no armored it's people. more of a okay. secret police i suppose would be the um the phrase i'd be looking at there Corby shrugs and goes, whatever you think best, and he looks at the two of you. Um, so, Patrick wanted to come here? So I suppose, technically speaking, you still do have a, a man on a leash. Technically speaking, yes. Right. And I called man uh, on the leash. I asked Patrick why did he even want to come here? He's looking much better now. It's a ruse. Stop you long enough. Surround you. Take your stuff. I... Were you dropped? Ah, you little prankster. Uh, let's go to the tavern. <laughs> hey, um... <laughs> is Quark perhaps using a voice changer in Stole Q's account? Because what is happening? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> she just 
drag a man to this place. A pub. As you open the door, take a look at it. It's a rather low ceiling supported by a mass with cross beams, narrow windows, shutters, and a large fire pit in the middle of the room surrounded by half a dozen tables and matching benches. As you look, there are a few people around, some eating, some drinking, some just relaxing and enjoying. You do, you see, standing behind the bar, is an ogre wearing a rather beautiful looking tiara, I'm going to have to say, until I get the exact image changed from JPEG to WebP. There we go, at which point a rather nice golden circlet with a few pearls on each side and a purple triangular amethyst. Hey Tom, that looked familiar to you. That's uh, right. And looks fam familiar to who? Just the Tom, Tom. doesn't the copy. Yeah. It's the Tom, but doesn't the copy. <laughs> it does. You see, it's, it picks up a book. It just starts reading it. Looking around, taking it all in. See, the book's name is The Sum of Theology by Saint Vithira. There's a few people looking around. No one seems to be bothered by this. Yeah. Look, everyone's content and happy. No one seems to acknowledge nor care about your presence specifically. Are you talking about me or the group? Yeah. You're the only one that went here to my knowledge. Yeah. Well, you you and your guy in a in manacles. I Tim would have gone was... Go Tim would have gone with him to the pub and I think unless Fossil's saying she's gonna take us straight to Silver, Corby would follow Jack in as well. Um, I walk towards the bartender. Uh, I want to get what's the equivalent of a pint? A pint. Beer, rum, yeah, pint. <laughs> and a pint for my werewolf friend over here. You heard me, guys. He is a werewolf. <laughs> we should have kept you mute. <laughs> but Kobe just yeah, probably. <laughs> Some people kind of look, draw some eyes as this man just kind of stands here, like you hear the shackles. Orzval's reputation is bad as it is, <laughs> just making it worse by proxy. He disappears for four months. Hey guys, three pints for me and Patrick. Right in this down. <laughs> Look, it's, it's Greg. Still Greg. Uh oh. <laughs> Is he gonna. Looks. I actually, I actually have a rum with a sparkling. Uh, it's nice sparkling water on the side. No, no, that's uh, peasantry for me, please. Thank you. Thank you. Z's. Get Patrick a oh. rum. Covered in. Dried blood, ripped clothes, still trying to keep up this upper facade. Is he young, kind of barman? It's like very tentatively starts pouring drinks and giving you all this really weird look like, you know, motherfucker, it is Tuesday, you know? Arsenal's trying to pretend like he isn't there. He's like, I don't know these guys. I'm not here, guys. Two cool. silver. Corby? Corby would walk over after this and say, You get four rooms for the night, please. I guess, uh. Just give me a second. He's, gonna, he's under, pulls four keys. It's, uh, one gold. 
Yes, I will. We're giving the slave his own room. <laughs> no. He gives key to um, Rupert, key to Griffin, key to Jacken, and key to himself. He assumes that uh, Opal can hook up with whoever he wants. If he wants to, because he doesn't sleep, does he? Or something like that. Uh. Warford chat. <laughs> yeah. So you take the keys, the friend kind of puts it in the sink and kind of leans into you. It's, uh, it's his deal. Kind of fingers towards Jack and the man who's like sitting down, he's like trying to drink using manacles. It's an experiment gone wrong. I'm not entirely sure. You might want to ask that one. I'll point the fastball. Why? They seem to know what's going on here. Oh, what's going on? Is he like, oh, can I hear from the story? Yeah, he's like into Corby, but now that Corby's pointed, he's kind of like, you know. Made himself a bit closer to you, made himself a bit louder to try to get your attention. Uh, after a bit I just sort of like relent and just lean, just accepting that I've been grouped in. I don't know, he ran into this, we, we ended up in a fight and apparently he wanted to keep him like a pet for some reason. I don't know entirely why, but... It's not trying to hurt us for the time being, so I suppose it's all right. I... <sighs> Next! He like, walks away, just trying to process all of this. Is all. Yes. Give me stealth, Corby. Is the rest he's doing? I don't know why I'm clicked for dwarvish. That's why I probably just kind of like start to make your way in to the crowd before. Very long, the the idea of Corby is a thing, but Corby's presence is not felt by anyone else here. So, uh, what's the rest of you doing out of curiosity? Uh, I'm going to talk to Patrick. Uh, yes? You're letting me so, go? Uh, oh, no. I just want to know how you do it. How I do what? Like I turn into a werewolf? It's no! <laughs> it's, it's a curse. Believe me, if I could break it, I would, but it's a curse. You could do it at will. If I'm hungry enough. It's a curse. You do not want this, friend. Enemy. You do not want this, asshole. Hmm. Yes. Another, another pint of rum for me and my good old friend. <laughs> He's drinking it. <laughs> this is a fucking pint of Captain Morgan's. <laughs> Just kind of leaves the bottle down. So, uh, yeah, I'll keep a tap. The bartender gonna walks away, wondering where this is going. As am I. I'm scared, and I need a cuddle. <laughs> he looks. 
You don't know the shame that comes with this. Waking up to find yourself covered in blood, unbeknownst if it's a man or a beast. The hunger that comes over you just because you haven't eaten anything like that in a while. Does the pavern sell food? itch that comes during certain times. Why would anyone want this? Why would anyone seek out a curse? Does the tavern sell food? Hello? Oh, hello. Alright, hold on. I ain't hearing shit. I was wondering why I was hearing weird stuff in a sec. Beep, 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 beep. There we go. Here you now. I was hearing this weird. And I thought, like, the server had crashed or something. Uh, does the tavern sell food? Yeah, yeah, it's another tavern. I'm gonna order, um, Patrick a steak. Um, order myself some. Some of that. If I have to deal with interrupted long rest because Jackin's ass is turning into a fucking werewolf at the full moon, I'm booking a flight to Ireland and I'm going <laughs> over there and I'm breaking your computer. <laughs> This man's like patrons and curses. Usually, ah, huh? Pokemon. Gotta catch them all. It's... You place an order. You get a little nod and such. It's gonna keep a running tab of everything that's going on. I'll just let you know at the very end. Like I said, kind of cheapish prices though for it all. Why would you want this? Why would you want to be cursed? Oh yeah, I, I don't. I'm just curious. Then read a book <laughs> that ins and outs of lycanthropy are surely written in tomes here. This is the greatest library in the Sword Coast. Uh, you seem very intelligent. I keep you around. If I was intelligent, I wouldn't have been cursed. I mean, was it your fault? If I'd heeded the warnings, it wouldn't be. But my hmm. hubris got the best of me, and we were cursed. Ah, you'll be fine. Well prepared steak meal comes. You enjoy weirdly pleasant, 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 if not tense conversation. Uh, I'm just gonna request a insight check from yourself. A Vernus party tried to go more than three sessions without a slave or a hostage. Absolute impossible challenge. <laughs> Gone wrong at 3 a.m. Corby, you slipped off into the shadows a while ago. What have you been up to? Um, Corby would have slipped out of the tavern and gone sort of like checking around to the uh, city. He would have tried to see if he could have just walked into the Great Library. If that was somehow like or you needed some kind of something to go in there or not. There, you take a look around. Whilst there are at the top of this, you know, conventional guards, at the, what would be classed as like the landing at the top of all of the stairs, you catch a glimpse, you know, 
you know, where you stand far enough back from something you see high enough. And the doors seem wide open. Like, almost beckoning to see people are leaving and going up. The top of these doors never seems to change. You asking around at all, or just... uh, is there some kind of uniform? Is there like, uh, some obvious? Could you like are there robes, or are there some kind of marking, delineating people who are students here, or masters, or guards? If I like, just sit there watching people go in and out of the library. Yeah. Uh, so, like, you know, your let's call it like your Swiss guards, like you know the guys that do the Pope. You know, like your sort of Swiss guardy guys here, all in like their yellows, but they all have weapons and they are very lightly armored. You know, there's maybe shoulder pads or like, you know, metal elbow pads or such. There are all manner of people going through as well and not, you know, yellows, blues, some purples, all in different robes, some more monkish in regards to how they are with like belts and shorter sleeves, definitely some who are more in a wizardy type robe and some who are very much in like an archmage's robe, so like, you know, bigger collars and such. It is, it's really easy to tell apart who is what. As for telling apart who is student and who is teacher, everyone seems to regard each other equally with no sense of greater presence to them. Everyone's just on a first name basis constantly. Bobby would just walk up the steps and into the library. He'd do it like he's not trying to like sneak in, but he's just like, you know, you follow someone along type thing and obviously moving quietly and he's small. Might not be noticed as much. Tentatively? Would that be the one I'm looking, you're looking for? I don't know. Yeah, tentatively, that's, that's fine. Yeah. He's, yeah. He's just trying to not be as obvious as someone like, say, Grifton would. Or oh, Grifton, you can smell coming. Even when you're up a breeze from him. But you start following people up. You know, it's taking it all in as you go up the first layer into this little garden you can see that not much here there is um wow whoever put thought yes yeah, there's some disability access to a point <laughs> you know watch as the cobbles seem to go up and snake around the side as you climb the neck next set of stairs oh, there's a lot of stairs you just gonna look around take it all in the guards seem to nods people are going and nodding at yourselves you're looking around at this point you're already seeing over the walls you're seeing the ocean out to the sides and the way you came with the forest and the roads you get to the very very top there are you know, a few more guards but as you look into this huge vast great hall we see like sort of marbled steps with a nice carpet that kind of justens up the middle, huge large stained glass windows of the Demir logo once more at the very very back with light shafts coming in. A manner of people seem to be walking around, there's little bookshelves everywhere, numerous little doors and just a big ass placard on the wall with numerous directions and levels, like one of those things you get in a hospital. It's with it the Guard is standing, looking out. Are you looking for something or someone? Particular place? Yes, to both. Uh, which in particular? I'm interested in uh, some information about just um, entities. I think it's how you put it. <clears throat> I was also told to come here and talk to someone. Religious entities? Where they are, though. Yeah. 
which ones in particular? Any particular pantheon? Mm, don't know if they're a member of a pantheon. Um, and he, I sort of whisper it and say, um, I don't know if it's to be said to, because it's not, and I point to Denier symbol. It's not that, so I don't know if I'm allowed to say it out loud. Ah. So he kind of gives you the little nod. Here, we worship the gods. Denier, however, all other gods are permitted. We have information on everyone. It's not just a worship thing. We just worship a god of knowledge. That's merely it. Well, I would be interested in had any books on Raven Queen. That's me. I you were sent, and I look around and realise that no one's with me. Well, E, but they're not here. I don't. It must be at the pub. We are sent to talk to someone here. Anyone in particular? Um, do you know the name Farcival? Mm. Rings and bells. Good ones and bad ones, but rings and bells. Well, I'm travelling with them, and they said they knew this person called Silvira, Vira, Vira. Ah, oh, yes, Silvira, Silvira Savicus. Yes, she's uh, quite high up here. And um, well, look up, yep. um, look up at the top. Well, techni <laughs> technically, technically, which, yes. which tower? Ah. Uh, Our office is very particular. Just give me a little second. <clears throat> he kind of takes a little step out, points over to the side. As you see this large, sort of almost half disc hanging off the side of the building. She's there. It's, um,. Third spire. Uh, about twentieth floor up, next to the uh, Griffin Griffin port. Too high up. It, it's high up, but uh, you won't even notice the climb. Sure. Can I just pop up and see her then, or not? You can. Um. Whether or not she's actually there is a different story. Um, she could be out. Have you s seen her walking around here at all? Tiefling woman, tall, uh, short hair, yellow and puffy dress. Usually has a croissant with her. Maybe. I didn't know what I was looking for. Um, but okay, maybe I should wait for a fast walk. But can I just go and see if there's anything I can read up on? Oh, yes. Um, through the hall, upstairs, take a left. Second spire, third floor. Uh, it's particularly uh, Shadowfell. Most of my things to do with it are there. You may find some of the information you're looking for there. Um... If not, then the gods section uh, on the fifth floor of the main building. Thank you. Uh, yeah, thank you. So I, I just wander off to one of those places. Um, see which one would he? He'd go to the second one, so the main gods place. Just wander off there. Yep. And then he, he's looking for stuff, but he's also just seeing 
how free is he to move around? Is he you know, like you know, like when you go into a shop and someone comes up and says, "Can I help you?" Yeah. Or... Yeah. Mm. Say as you are looking around, you know. There are numerous scholars and students and of the like running around grabbing things. A few people, you know, running past you give you that old, you know, oh, excuse me, pardon me. But for the most part, no one seems to offer any help in that regard. But there are, you know, a few people sitting by the walls reading certain books who are dressed more like the guard. You get the feeling that. If you needed it, they would help, but they're not going to offer that service freely. They also are keeping sort of an eye on things. Yeah, if, they, if things get out of hand, that's definitely for them to intervene, but they're also there to help. He would then he would sort of just spend the rest of the afternoon or whatever time we have wandering around being part of the library, the courts are seeing, seeing if he finds anything, but it's more a case of just casing the joint, really. Corby plans to rob Candlekeep. Got it. Uh. Or the feasibility <laughs> of it. Well, it's possible. Let's uh, camera it out. Woo! Farcible. You've witnessed these weird conversations that Jackin has been having. Initially, about that, uh, that lycanthropy and such. Your home. Home, air quotes. Yeah. You know, it's. Yeah, it's alright. It's like visiting the city for the first time in, you know, a few months, but. What's the. What are you doing? What's the plan? Uh, well, I'm like exiting the pub and stuff like that because that's just not my sort of energy, anyways. But um, as I like sort of like walk out and everything, is there anybody like anything particular going on? Is there any like people that I might recognize? Anybody who might say hello to me? Anything like that? Anything familiar that might keep like catch my gaze? Mm. Looking around, no, everyone. Seems to be engrossed in their own little things right now. Lots of lots of studying going on, lots of people just, you know, talking at each other. You hearing things in regards to experiments people are doing. People talking about, like, you know, netherese magic, netherese orb, uh, not netherese orbs, netherese goblisks and such being found in certain places, but no one seems to notice you at the moment nothing okay. really interesting a rather dull day inside candlekeep here at the moment it's okay being ignored at candlekeep is like his best <laughs> his best talent um all right see that's the thing he doesn't usually do much but i guess he can sort of start um looking out for maybe where Sylvira might be is there like um, I mean, I guess Corby kind of did that, but is there, like, would I have any knowledge of, like, where her, like, common whereabouts are? Things that, like, things <clears throat> besides her office that I might know about. You know she has an unhealthy obsession with work. Like, eat, sleep, pray, my work office. The only time she ever leaves the office is if there's something she needs that isn't in there. And it usually doesn't ever leave there again. Mm. Very much a workaholic, but as a demonologist, a diabolist and such, you know. It's a ever-expanding field of work. Yeah. Um... So it's like most likely that she's in there, so I wouldn't need to like look around for her or anything like that. Like it's not like she's out of place typically. Yes, yeah, it's not like she's gonna be on a walkabout elsewhere. Many times out of ten. Um... Yeah, many times out of a hundred, you'd find her there. Um, I'm trying to think of like anything that would 
be needed in any way or shape or form. Um, I mean, yeah, I guess I'm just sort of like, probably just like wandering about, um, looking for anything that might be helpful or useful because the only thing I can really think of is finding her at the moment and that's sort of sorted. So I guess I'll just sort of wander around until something happens or until we decide to regroup. Just making 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 notes and sort of refamiliarizing myself with my home. I'll as the DM, I'll be very nice. I know, right? And I'll give you a solemn worth of advice. You almost got your shit rocked in one attack and you have two hundred odd gold. Help? Wait, wait, huh? Wait. You had five hit points before you were healed. Oh yeah. And you have two hundred gold. Yeah. I'm suggesting you spend the time, some of that money. <laughs> that is true. Um, I'm just trying to think. Cause the thing is that most of the things like spell components and stuff like that that he needs, but he doesn't buy anything. He's a loser. Um. Scoreboard. <laughs> Uh, do any of your spells require components at the moment? Let me check. Armor of Agathis, no. Shatter, no. Nope. Nope. Do you know any of the spells you're going to be picking up in the future, out of curiosity? Uh, not off the top of my head. I'd have to go back and look. I'd know if I saw my chart, but I don't know their names off the top of my head, nor would I know what their, like, components and stuff are. I... That's the thing, it's like, I have so much money to spend, but like, there's nothing to spend it on besides, I guess, crossbow bolts, but he doesn't use that often. Healing potions. That's true. Yeah, I don't know. You got that weird potion. I'll tell you that one. You got that one. Um, that was given to you by the, the crazy guy. <laughs> I'm gonna call him that. I didn't even I didn't even think of an NPC name for him. It's just like, yeah, fuck it, we're doing this. We're going meta. We're going two levels deep. Real. Um. Hmm. I mean, yeah, I suppose I could pick up like healing potions or something like that. Uh, I'm gonna give you your choice here. Uh. You can play that out or you can just uh 50 50 gold a potion in fact um, you're you're a local here people know you call it 40 gold a potion you know being nice to me it's a first um it's employee yeah. discount <laughs> <laughs> all right so i've actually i don't think i ever bought something i think dude first of all it's like of like the a sugar baby equivalent like a passenger princess. Everyone just keeps buying shit for him. He just accumulates money. Um, how do I remove it from a sheet? Uh, the money? Yeah. Um, just click it, and you've got two hundred and ten. Type the new amount. Okay. Like if you're buying to just work out with two hundred and ten negative eight, yes, for example. Okay. I was under the impression that I put my D&D &D beyond, so there it is here, it's changed, DBB items, I'll add a healing potion. Potion of healing, normal, I'll add that and then just hover over it and change the number to the relevantly correct number that you bought for the amount, which I saw. Alright. <clears throat> yep, you went to the shop, rather big fat bearded man with a Nice little goatee beard. Yeah. Gladly parts away with these potions. Gives you a good, you know, enjoy your day. Missa tips his fedora as you leave. Oh, God. Gotta give like some form of comedy in some places. Alright, we can't all be doom and gloom. <laughs> this entire session was comedy for like at least 40 <laughs> minutes straight. Like I, I can't even decide which part's going to like the postable clips because we were sitting here laughing our asses off at like human trafficking and <laughs> werewolves and shit for like 
30 minutes until we decided to be serious about it. And then immediately stopped being serious after it. Yeah. We got to candle keep and Farcival was sentimental for about three seconds before he was interrogated at a bar. Race and age pulls out the book. Tiefling 30? Hmm, too young. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um... Uh, <clears throat> I'm gonna ask, is anybody doing anything else in regards to this? Or are we taking the um, end? Yep. I just want to finish up by uh, the entire time in the bar, I just told Patrick everything that, everything that happened in the campaign, basically. <laughs> just filling him in. I, curses, I've been cursed, you've been cursed, you know what I mean? Straight up trauma um, dump. <laughs> yeah, so I tell him about the Patreons, I tell him about the. All the all that sort of shit. The and I I tell the barkeep, is there any clerics that specialize in curse removal? Yes. That's a few, Where? yeah. Where's the best? Oh the they're all the best, sir. It depends upon uh their domains. Uh but they're they're all found Run about the great library or in the chambers. Uh, depends on you know, who you go to. Do you have any recommendations? Any specific names you want to mention? I'm not stupid enough to get cursed, sir. I work behind the bar. <laughs> okay, okay. Builders, clerics inside the library that specialize in curse removal. Yes. Okay, that's... Yeah, that's okay. I take a mental note of that. I miss when you were normal. <laughs> <laughs> I miss when you'd be too afraid to see stuff. <laughs> Corby. You looking for anything in particular? You're on mute, by the way. I think he's dead. Tom he's can't be dead. Most. He's got school tomorrow. Um, Kobe would probably keep up the, uh, what's the word, uh, the gain that he's looking for stuff. So he'd probably find a couple of basic books on um, religion and gods and the Raven Green and stuff. But would he be able to find or pick up um, any like robes or clothes that he could use to make, to adjust his, you know, his... Uh, Persona, the other persona, the hidden disguise, so that it's not the bird walking around, he's a robed figure. Mm. Yep, yep. I'd say with these, there are, you know, a few people who have taken off some robes that, you know, deep in study, who have, you know, maybe taken off a jacket or such to cool off, that you're able to very slyly, you know, with books in hand, walk by and just kind of adopt as your own. Um, and then he would probably head back to other than figuring that possible would get everything sorted so we can go and see the lady tomorrow. Then I'll see for this one here. There'll be no more rolls or such needed for tonight. But use all get back to the hearth. Patrick, Greg, starts to bemoan his situation, but, you know, fucking werewolves, am I right? He's all, get some good sleep. Some very good sleep. A nice night, quiet, for the first time in a while. And... He's awake. The next morning, bright and early, ready to take on the day. Uh, 
I will say for everyone on D and D Beyond, if you want to go ahead and update your sheets to level 5. Yay! Do Eldritch Flasks! <laughs> <laughs> Yay! <laughs> And if you have anything that requires you to take a long rest or such, go ahead and push those buttons. Thank you. For, for everyone else using the uh, stuff here, we'll go ahead and update that later. Uh, especially for like Jack and that level. Just remake the Jack and Sheet and D&D Beyond remake to claim later. Yeah. <clears throat> you awake. In the morning. Bright and early. Greg has not tried to escape. Feeling can I, like, yeah? Can I, can I bathe him and clothe him? I'll pay for anything. Why? <laughs> not, in a, not, not, not in a gay way, but like, you know, like... <laughs> Like, that you wasn't know, what like... I was implying, but like, <laughs> you went feel like... He's, he's covered in blood and he's, he's, you know, you know what I mean? I can't have that. I can't have that. <laughs> My produce will be in tip-top condition when I sell it. <laughs> oh, yeah, you can very easily bathe them. Uh, doesn't cost, too. I'd say, overall, Strike off three gold total for your entire bill for clothing for this guy, uh, your drinks, your food. You know. I hate this game. <laughs> <laughs> this campaign is cursed now. It's, it's so bad. Uh, I don't know what anyone, what anyone else wants to do, but my first move is to take yeah, Patrick to the library, to one of the clerks. As you leave the pub, you hear the ah! Roll d20. Just a regular d20. Just a regular flat d20. You watch this whoop, piece of bird shit lands in front of you. And you look up and you see that same raven spinning round. Okay. I, it messes me. Yeah, best. Yeah, okay. I'm happy. <laughs> so you head on up the mountain of stairs. This is a workout for then. You you can skip leg day tomorrow with this claim, guys. Don't worry. You get to the top. The guard seems to place a hand out towards you. Um, where are you going? I'm going to seek a cleric that specializes in curse removal. Okay. Not with that. Points to the man in manacles with a leash round his neck. Oh no, he's the one that's cursed. That's why I'm here. It's not for me. I said there'd be no rolls, but I want a persuasion check. <laughs> you were too quick off the bat with that. <laughs> you you came to class prepared to say that. Oh, come on. <laughs> Six. Release the man. That's a mock, really. If he wishes hey, to remain cursed, he can remain cursed. Um, I release Patrick. I'm his shackles and ask him if he wants to come in with me. You sure? You sure. Let's go. Think... Yeah, I proceed inside the library and seek out someone that looks like a cleric. Do Corby and Farce will follow, or are they doing their own little things first? Um... Corby would I follow think Farce would library. follow, but like, more so just because he doesn't want to lose him. <laughs> <laughs> and as you perceptively follow... 
Jack and you look round. Um, in a sea of yellows and purples, it's hard to make out what is a cleric and what is a wizard here. There's no one bar the guard seems to wear any type of armour. All just loose clothing. Um, I go to the nearest, nearest person in purple and ask them, where can I find a skilled cleric? Got this little halfling guy. He's kind of looks up big nose, nice ashy hair. Ah, uh, do you have a particular domain? Trickery, yeah, twilight, death, it's desert, maybe. Ah, uh, uh, do, do you know what you're looking for? Uh, I'm looking to remove a curse, and do you, does it matter what what curse it is or? No, no, they they all good at it. If you're looking to remove a curse, that's a that's an easy one. He rubs his hands and places it on you. <laughs> Problem solved, and walks away. He watches these hands had brightened up. But you feel no different. <laughs> Not for me. What are you doing? The, the, the specifics. Him. Look at him. Look at Patrick. Look at him. He's fucking her coming out of his fucking ears. Look at him. See, looks. Oh, Ken I like that. Didn't used to walk on. Mm. May I approach another person in purple robes? <laughs> he just gave up. <laughs> I'm just imagining that D and D move. He's seen me. They just start digging up all the fucking bodies. <laughs> but it's him with guys in purple. Oh, I fucking needed this! <laughs> As you approach another man in purple. Hey. Tiefling man. Hey. Purple tiefling as well. Just, you know, because we're really just flavouring this guy. As he looks at you. Nice goatee. Yes. I bet you five gold that you cannot lift this guy's curse. I point to Patrick. He looks up at you. Sir, I'm a sorcerer. We well, where's the clerics? Well, then you owe me five gold. I never accepted your bet, but they're on the first floor. Jesus Christ. Right, how do I get to the first floor? Go there, to the left, set of stairs, go up there, and you'll be there. I'm just gonna look up, and there's like a wooden platform with an awful lot of fucking books. You can see sort of people hanging off. It's a. Uh, I, where they would be. I just give off a big massive sigh and look at Patrick and say you're a fucking headache. Again, it was a ploy just to steal your stuff. You've actually brought me here. I actually don't want to be here. Yeah, yeah, Patrick, come on. It's I, Craig. I go to the first floor, I guess. <laughs> You go up to the first floor and you see all manner of people <laughs> looking around. Very much all with their little demeanor necklaces. All regrant and holy. I just. Who is the best cleric here? 
Is he? Massive rabble. Me, uh, me, it's me. No, it's me, it's me. Five goals to whoever could lift this man's curse. See, closest cleric walks up and just places a hand on his head. You watch the hand lights up. The other hand comes under. You see the book. You don't see a hand, it's just a book. Yep. Five gold. I, I give him the five gold. Closes the book. Off you go. Off you go. Over the back, there's a bunch of people. One of the guards had to like step in to hold these two guys away from each other. Craig looks up. I'm free now. I go. How do you feel? Fine. Try to turn into a werewolf. I, that, it's not a choice I have when I'm not hungry. Do you still feel like a werewolf deep down? No. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Not yet. You're staff me. Just in case. Just for your own safety. Let's be honest here. Listen, hear me out, right? All of your friends are dead. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, you're more than likely gonna die out there. Like, let's be honest here. He could like, come with us. <laughs> yeah, you could come with us. Like, how great is that? Like, uh, like come on. Like, what? You... <laughs> what is it with you guys just adopting people? <laughs> it's like some maternal and paternal instincts are just kicking in in a game of D and D. Uh, give me this first. is not. This is not fucking maternal instincts. This is like the instincts of whatever colonizer bloodline we have that was in charge of keeping slaves. Um, I'm Irish. I'm Irish. <laughs> I don't have any of that. Yeah, yeah. He's he was the slave. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, fuck. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Okay. So what does Patrick say to that? Give me a persuasion check first, we'll see. Oh, this better be a not funny, this better be a not funny. Are you serious? I'll let you know right now, I rolled a 3 plus 2 for a total of 5. Okay. So like... As you look... <sighs> just gonna... Puts his head down in defeat. And just follows you. And no more mugging. And no more lying. Stop lying to me. <sighs> just climb the stairs. I'm assuming at this point, you are headed over to Sylvira's. Unless there's anything else anyone else wishes to be doing. No, I don't think of. Oh, it's been a weird one, but yes. <clears throat> Make your way through the building. I actually have no maps for this part for a while, so we're in it for the long run looking at Candlekeep. Yes. Make your way up, through, around. You see all different areas, the sword coast, from up on high, over forests, over oceans. It's a nice little sight. Makes you want to go to more castles. But, eventually after what is a good 20 minute walk, you past the threshold of a door. The walls of this chamber are punctuated by arched windows that are shuttered. 
bookcases filled with tomes stand by the windows. Tables created by specimen jars, alchemical equipment and other clutter are strewn around. From your vantage point, you can see carved into the floor a large nine-pointed star. You can also see standing by the windows at the other end of the room as a middle-aged tiefling dressed in wizardly robes just looking out through the crack in the shutters you see just hopping around some of the top of the bookshelves a small spiny green creature with bug eyes thin horns and a whip like tail see at this point you're it's like a library study to stand at a Large set of stairs that descend into the room, but have a commanding view of the entirety of this room. Off to mm. one side as well, there's a large door. Well, a double door, but not as large as all the other doors. It seems to be reinforced. <clears throat> what are we doing? Did you say the door was closed? Door on the other end of the room is closed. Hmm. Okay. Uh, Corby would um, nudge Grifton and then pantomime reaching into his pants, pulling out the box and giving it to Farcival. Does it work? <laughs> oh, we're about to find out. Oh, so we've got sheet open. That's worse. That tracks. Griffin scratches his balls and <laughs> puts a finger over towards Parcival. Parcival looks like he's about to actually kill him. Corby goes, no, 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 holds up three fingers, puts down two, leaving one up. You can you can imagine which one it is. <laughs> and goes. And then it's like, makes a little box side, and then Jim's passing over to Tharsal. Do it with advantage. Oh, thank God we've done it with advantage. Gonna watch as he lightens. Oh, I'll let you know right now. That's oh, right. First one was an eight. <laughs> the eyes light up and hand goes down. Comical root around. Yep. Pulls out the box and immediately hands it over to Farso. Thank I you. <laughs> I'd say he smiles, but like I don't think I've ever seen him smile at anything other than violence. Yeah. Uh, so we're like in there, right? Like we're in. Yeah, you're in the room. Okay. The woman um, is at the other end of the room, and what could only be described as deep contemplation. Yeah. Uh. So after the so after a bit of just like staring and just sort of you could see there's just like a sort of dis bit of disappointment in his face that he's coming back after four months and this is what he's giving to her, um. But after a moment, he just sort of like clears his throat. Just <clears throat> Ar Mage, I apologize to bother you, but do you have a minute? Watch as he head immediately cocks. Yes, dear. I do. Yeah. Turns round. Welcome back. Thank You've you. Brought friends? Uh, yes. 
and then some, some, uh, certain, I... Come, come down, come down. You have to tell me everything, but I've received a letter as well. So, I have an idea why you're here, but, you know, come on, come on. She makes her way to a desk, just to the off side of the name-pointed circle. Uh, she just sort of is, yeah, makes her way across and just sort of um, rotates the cube in his hand before, like, looking at it. While we were out, um... It's a very complicated story, but we found this object that seems to be linked to an important key to whatever we're searching for. And initially, our companions had try op tried opening it, but it seems that it was far too dangerous for us, for us to deal with ourselves, and it nearly killed us multiple times. So, considering your uh, expertise on these sort of of things I was hoping that maybe you are capable of getting a better look at it <sighs> did did anyone try magic uh I'm not sure I think someone tried just opening it and doing the patterns but I was not willing to kill myself over it without knowing everything first Smart, smart, smart. Uh, where did you get it? Who gave you it? What's what's going on? Yes, you, you, people don't get sent and recommended to me for no reason. Who and what gave you this? Or did you get this? You're going to tap it on it. As you can hear that really quite heavy. As she bashes on it and the weight seems to just transfer. Well, as we were... Mm executing our mission um what's the name of the guy that actually had it in the first place who it came from or who you took it from uh both uh held thrustwell thrustwell was given it by a uh, killed thrustwell van thumper van thumper thrustwell was given it by savius creek we they retrieved it through multiple people, but apparently an individual named Tharvius Krieg had given it to one of the Van Tharpers, oh, and shit. we found it therefore. What well, she's gonna... sits down. I... <laughs> I've been suspicious of the High Overseer for a while, quite a long time, but... Uh, no one wanted to hear the concerns of someone who studied demons in the outer plains. And because he was such a widely regarded hero, he saves the city, blah 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 blah, gives rise to a holy nation. Hailed as a saviour he was, he's given everyone some reason to love him and everyone in this city has sworn an oath, the Creed Resolute, which is to get them to defend the nation and do what he did, because it's the right thing. Let me tell you, I met him a few years ago, and just something was off. He was a charlatan, and I suspected he had done deals with devils. And, well, I think you've given me everything I need to prove my theory. As you watch, she's going to take the box and holds it up. Turns it ever so slightly. You hear this? Turns it again. He watches the corner seem to pss. He box floats in the air as these runes start to spin round it. I have an image. Oh, 
you watch. Even the little quizette seems to be in absolute awe. As this six-sided cube seems to start breaking out and down. Is it done? cast divine senses. Yep. I do, so one sec. So I'm not sure, I'm not, I'll, I'll let you know just right now in regards to it. Box is evil, I don't know how it would go with this, but as more will be explained in a moment, but as it is unfolding, you do feel this infernal magic kind of coming off with it. First of all, and Corby. Use watch as these nine metal plates start to ting 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 like a ladder. Use can read the ruins, as can Sylvira. Yes, you look. The ruins on this box read. As follows. Be it known to all that I, Thavius Krieg, High Overseer of Elturel, have sworn to my master, Zariel, Lord of Avernus, to keep the agreement contained in this oath. I hereby submit to Zariel in all matters and of for all time. I will place her above all creatures, living and and dead. I will obey her all of my days and beyond with fear and severity. Severity, you know. I recognize the dispensation of the device called the Solar Insidiator, hereafter called the Companion. In my capacity as High Overseer of Elturel and its vassal territories, I acknowledge that all lands falling under the light of the Companion are forfeit to Zariel. All persons bound to defend Elturel are also considered forfeit. I further recognise that the dispensation will last 50 years, after which the Companion will return whence it came, taking Elturel and its oath-bound defenders with it. If that is Zariel's wish, all this is my everlasting pledge. Thavius Creek. I feel that's a good place to end it. Yeah.